backed out the hammer and it's because one I'd be conflicted like what the fuck but, seven soft but, but two <laughs> seven soft is crazy <laughs> Yo, no warts, yo. clean shaft. <laughs> what a waste of a piece. Seven soft. No warrior mom. Never going to Turks. Why? Turks is the new Orchard Beach. That's crazy. <laughs> Are we rolling? It costs too much to be that. I get what you're saying, but it costs nothing. Too much costs too much. They Everybody's with, a scammer. They did that in Tulum. You that is too expensive. Saying to that. Turks is the new Orchard Beach is absurd. It is. He That's crazy. It. No disrespect it. to Turks, but everybody's. Gone or going to Turks. I could like Tulum, maybe that comparison, but Turks is still Turks, even though no, Tulum goes is there. Tulum. But is, you go to Puerto Rico. Tulum is the new, but I'm not going. Tulum like, is Coney Beach, Coney Island. To, yeah, I'll say, say Tulum is like the new like S South Beach. It's Jones Beach. Yeah, and then once that airport is in Tulum, it's really over. It's a wrap. But just because everyone goes to Turks doesn't like it's still a very expensive place. Yeah, no, it, and it's a, it's a beautiful place, but I'm just like. It's just like everybody's going. Like, I just don't. Yeah, I know that about me. I don't like going where everybody's going. I'd rather go to somewhere where it's like, oh, nobody's on to this spot yet. Cool. You don't want to go to that doc bar that, no. that Drake goes to? Knows you don't want to run into the boy in Turks? No. You know, you could just go to Turks and avoid the, the only thing is certain clubs and restaurants and Noah's Ark that people go to. But there's you can literally avoid all. Oh, of I know. That. You can go anywhere and just be isolated and secluded from, you know, you don't have to be mixy. Besides going from a, you know, a restaurant or something like that. But there's a lot of other islands that people are not onto yet. For sure. You know like what I'm what? saying? Chill. We ain't doing that. Roosevelt? <laughs> yeah. we, we ain't doing that, baby D. Nah, we ain't giving that away. Bro, can you text it to me? I got you. All right. Cool. I mean... Bro, hit the clock, bro. What we doing? I mean, they could just like look at a map. Yeah, but still. They wouldn't know to go there. Though. Like within and the West there, Indies? or Yeah, but they wouldn't know to go there. And if they go there, they wouldn't know what to do. I guess that's true. You know what I'm saying? Like now people know what to do just by following people on social media. Okay, I got to go there. I got to go there. It's like they get their whole itinerary based off of the people they follow that have been to an island. Like, Oh yeah, mine's... I like Noah's Ark and Turks. Everybody wants to go there just because Drake obviously made it a hot spot. And That's what the ball players be. Yeah. Allegedly. I yeah. wouldn't know. I don't um, think it's alleged. I think it's pretty safe no, to say it. that they're there. Yeah. I got my... There's a lot of women without jobs awful. go there off of um the prices and everything off of TikTok. I went on TikTok and searched like everything I wanted to do and found where to do it, how much it was going to cost, how to contact every. I love TikTok. If they can't ban TikTok, I'll die. Can't ban the snowman. I, I do believe that. I do believe if they ban TikTok in America, we will see a mass suicide. <laughs> a um, mat like a I'm a like it. a cult suicide like I'm I'm I Nike think, Cortez. How much is how much does it take to to like how many do it take to reach like a mass? Is it like... I think it's eight. Eight people... <laughs> eight is not a mass. It's a mass suicide every day then. <laughs> Probably on this block. But if, if you guys all do it together, okay. you have to do it Like together. as a crew. As a crew, yeah. Oh, no. But, I think if they ban TikTok in America, we're going to see way more than eight people commit suicide. I just... <sighs> Instagram be down for 30 minutes and people be fucking panicking and losing their mind. Which I don't understand because Instagram ain't even that girl. People will find the new thing. Instagram ain't what? She ain't that girl. What is that? I don't. I don't know. Like it, she's not it. Like Instagram is not the girl. Like Instagram is not the it girl anymore. Oh, that's like she's okay. Not like uh, that's like the new thing that y'all are saying now. Like it's not. That's not the girl. Yeah, like she's not that girl. Okay. Like that. You know who that girl is? Like the it girl. She's not the it girl anymore. But she's still the goat. Like even if she's not the yeah. hottest chick that year, she is still. Yeah. She's still Bernice. Yes. Yeah. Like there's always going to be another Fashion Nova partner. But Julie, we know what is, Bernice. What is the? What is the? What is the correlation with this blue slide on the? Uh, you guys oh, we'll, we'll get into that. Well, welcome back, everyone. That's right. um, we'll, we'll get into uh, our weekends in a second. Thank you for coming back. We have a new My Karma is Beautiful available right now with our friend Boss. Boss, thank you for coming out, man. Appreciate that. We love um, you Shout out to Queens, Fiends in the building. Somebody replied back to us posting the Boss like trailer real thing. Boss with the dexterity of an elite Tetris player on the mic. <laughs> Yeah, if you really look at the video, like you can tell, he was great at Tetris. I got this the same feeling for sure. Yeah, um, but how was your weekend? Weekend was cool, man. Weekend was cool. Uh, Dreaming about DC this weekend. DC March twenty third, mm -hmm. Saturday. Yeah, that came quick, right? Very quick. This Saturday, March twenty third, we are in DC. Howard Theater tickets are still available. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We always have fun when we go down to DC. The crowd is great. People are great. Um, I got some family coming up. Some family coming out. From Maryland and Virginia and shit like that. So something tells me you have a lot of family off ninety five. Absolutely. 
That's just leave it right there. I don't need to. <laughs> They're just, <laughs> they're just conveniently settled. placed just at exits yeah, just right off 95. Like, you know what? This is a nice neighborhood right here. Yeah, just, you know what I mean? D.C., then Richmond. Yeah. Like, wh- <laughs> why does it just keep going city? Yeah. Why does more so much family in Greensboro? It's just, it's just like, you know, the DMV area is a great area, man. <laughs> beautiful area, beautiful people. So March 23rd, this Saturday, we will be in D.C. Tickets available now, Um, Since we got that out of the way, we can get to the weekend. I got no text messages from any of you. Um, I think it was out of respect that St. Patrick's Day does exploit my culture. So that's why nobody Yo, it's funny said because, happy St. Pat's to me, right? Yo, it's funny because somebody mentioned to me that it was St. Patrick's Day and I was like, oh shit, I thought about calling you. Mm. But I was like, Rory is probably going to hang up on me if I call him and wish him happy St. Pat's Day. Yeah, because if you called me, I think something would be <laughs> wrong. And then for me to just say happy St. Pat's Day, you'll probably be like, all right, I'm not doing this. Call me on my birthday. And yeah, 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 yeah. I'll save it for your birthday. Because <laughs> <I'll call you. laughs> yeah. I would feel like you don't call me on my birthday, but St. Patrick's Day is when you do it. I called you on your birthday. You text him happy birthday with the earth it capitalized. Yeah, but I called him too. Yeah. Though. I called him I don't on your birthday. Probably. Yeah. I, I don't called remember. him on his birthday. Yeah, absolutely. You gonna call me on mine? March 26, 30 years old. Baby D in the building. She's gonna he, lose he, her phone out there. She's he not didn't, gonna have, say, a he didn't have to say that. He Why not? Said. I think it's dope that you're turning 30. Like I get to I get to witness you like reach a milestone, like the 30th. So I dog, get to witness what, that. every every dog year is seven years, right? Every dog year is seven years. Julian, yeah. I promise you, I will slap the yeah. dog shit out of you today. So Demarius so is 210 in dog years? I was going to yeah. say, let's follow this. Let's follow my logic here. Okay. Men, I feel like we age a year. A year is a set standard oh, I know of time some, for Some niggas men. I went to high school with aged more than a year. Well, that's the crack. These niggas look bad. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, things, you know, change your biological clock. But I'm saying a year, men or a year. If you say you're 30, you're 30 as a man. But 30 for a woman means it's a little different. In what way? How so? It's not like as, egg it's, freezing difference. Well, yeah, your your clock. Like people look at it. Like someone says, if you're a man and you're thirty, you're young. If you're a woman and you're thirty, I don't think it's that way anymore. So I want to <laughs> ask you guys, what is the clock? Like, what is the number? If if the dog is seven years, if a man is just the one to one ratio, you know that clock. The, you know that woman. To you know that clock ratio? we have at like Union Square. Yeah, like on the building of all the debt that we've ensued. Yeah. That's the woman's. That's clock. the woman's. <laughs> <laughs> Seven seventy four trillion. <laughs> <laughs> like damn, ugh, thirty, you getting up there, baby D. Mm-hmm. No, but I'm I'm happy that to to witness this though. Like I want to see. I'm I'm excited to see Damaris in her thirties and uh you know see how she changes, how she evolves. You told us you you had a. Uh, can I say it on what you did this weekend? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. But see, I asked, right? <laughs> see, what you, you see? I'm still weekend? on my toes. <laughs> I'm still on my toes. I asked, right? I wasn't going to just throw your business out there. I just asked. You know what I'm saying? Which, but you know, now watch Roy out. ask again. Like, why Roy wants to clarify? No, so she, she had. She did something this weekend. Okay, and, you know, didn't tell me. Yeah, it wasn't nothing crazy. It's just no. a Damaris weekend. Just you know, just got you. Yeah, getting older, shit. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. t- <laughs> but I do plan on freezing my eggs, even though you were being on a side. Freezing your pick. eggs? You only thirty. See, that's this proves my point. That's not. I'm not trying to be an asshole with this question. I'm saying their clock is different. I'm you not kept go, bringing up dog ears. You kept bringing up dog freezing. ears. You were trying to be a dick. Well, because because comparatively, we look at we, to dogs. We look at women like dogs. Well, yeah. Yes. Well, a bitch is a female dog. The C. And I do love my bitches. That's right. So there you go. Some a lot of men treat their dogs better than their bitches. Most men treat their dog better than their bitches. It's a part of America. Oh, my God. A nigga nigga with a a, a thoroughbred pit bull, baby, he treat a female pit bull. He treat her amazing. That dog eats steak. He'll carry the dog and and dog walk the woman. (laughs) That dog eats steak. (laughs) Your girl can't eat steak. Nope. I mean, yo, your girl eating oatmeal maybe. for dinner while your female pit bulls eating like a a ribeye. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> like imagine going in the kitchen and searing a ribeye in the pan, and your girl upstairs thinking you throwing down for her, and you put that shit in a dog bowl, <laughs> like it's an eight ounce fillet. <laughs> how long have I been with Rafifi. the girl compared to how long I've had the dog? I mean, it don't matter. Man. You can't matter. cook no ribeye for your female pit bull and take some fucking oatmeal upstairs to your girl. I've definitely cooked a, a steak for Bays before. Really? And fed that girl Chipotle. Yeah. And then fed your girl like stovetop Kraft macaroni and cheese? Yeah, why not? That mac and it. cheese as in damn. That's made. a Republican right there. So, like, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a real Republican right there. That's America's Republicans man. are about like the nuclear family, so stop. I uh, love dogs too, but cooking a, <laughs> cooking a steak for your dog and then giving your girl some bullshit is wild. A woman will break your heart. A dog won't. Unless they like die. Well, I mean, they die every 10 years. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, that's why you have to make sure their time here is well spent. You have mad time to eat a steak. Bays only has 10 years. My homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> we only got a short time with her. Gotta, gotta make you her happy. Mad time Keep her happy. <laughs> <steak. laughs> Bays isn't going to make it to 30 like you. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I, maybe I should freeze her eggs. Freeze Just her. freeze her. Freeze, Actually, yeah, wait, freeze no, her. Freeze no, the whole they dog. Already, they, already, <laughs> they already made me uh, would you, cut her uh, open. Would you, get, would you do taxidermy on Bays? Like what is that? Stuff her. You like stuff, stuff her. her and put on a mantle. You can do that? Yeah. With everything. Rory, I promise that. you if you right. fucking stuff bays, oh, you better, fuck you're yeah. not going to do that. Hell yeah. No, you're not. Like with the same fur? Every, it It'd looks like her. she's just standing there frozen. Yeah. That'd be amazing. <laughs> that would be the sickest shit in the world. <laughs> Yo, if I walk in your house, God forbid, and Bays has passed away, and then you get taxidermy, and Bays is like on the mantle by the TV, I'm leaving. I'm walking out of your house. I'm going to take it a step further and be truthful. This isn't for content. I would sleep like with- With dead ass bays? Yeah. Yo, Rory I cuddle Mike, bays to he's white. sleep. So like I would, if I have bays what? in the afterlife, like, yeah. Looks like you can do it from anywhere from like 500 to a thousand dollars to taxidermy a, a domestic dog. That'd be awesome. That's crazy. I wouldn't want to see the process though. That'd be, that would no, break you my don't, heart. You, yeah, it's the only, you gotta be a stick. You be a stick cut, fuck. Cotton in her at fucking asshole. No, I would hope that you wouldn't want to see the fucking process. Whoever really does that is a sick fuck though. Yeah. To cut up like dead dogs and make stuffed animals out of them. That's mm -hmm. some sick shit. Yeah, it's a real thing though. Yeah, that's a real thing. Big yeah. business. Uh, but like, yeah. I, see, I would want to do that, but then it would remind me of that process. Mm. Like if I looked in the fake eyes they put in, I'd be like, well, where did they put Baze's eyes? Yeah. I, yeah, I'd feel away. No, no, I'd Oprah. take it back. It would be nice to cut it though. You want the eyes closed, Rory? Hmm? No, they don't close the eyes. No, they don't close the eyes. I would they think they would put like, fake eyes in It looks in like them. the dog is just frozen. It looks like the dog is literally just frozen. There. And you can get it like positioned. Like, you can have her sitting like down, laying down. Shit. Oh, like, like she walking like mid walk, like yeah. how you get the Instagram photos when you walk in through New York City. Yep. It'd be cool. Like Baze does her hind leg dance. Like they could do that. <laughs> freeze her yeah, that yeah. way. They could do that. But then we get like they a. They could do that. <laughs> they could do that. A fake piss stream coming out because she's yeah. all peeing every time you go near her. They could do that. We can do uh, all of that. Listen, I'm kind of sold. It's 2024, man. There's You're nothing not we can't do. You're not doing that to my niece. You're not doing that. That's some sick shit to cuddle with that, though. What? Cuddle with the taxidermy is just like... Cuddle with the taxidermy is... That's that's cuddling that's with a, a going, carcass? That's equivalent to like going to somebody's house and like they're in the bed and you go in the room like, yo, what's up? And they got like the urn with ashes in the bed with them. It's like... Yeah, it's like spooning and No, urn. but that's ashes. Like I would... The fur would be there. That's Wouldn't the fur like start to die? How do they no, do they, that? Uh, it's... What's that uh, called? What they, they coat it in? It's a, pre a preservative. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a waxy type of thing. Yeah. Oh, hmm. not against it. No, getting it done is honest. I, I know people that have gotten it done to their pets, but cuddling with it is a whole different level. I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, speaking of fatherhood, <laughs> I sent speaking a video. Of taxidermy. <laughs> <laughs> I I sent a video to Damaris and Julian this morning, so I didn't really celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Okay. I, I don't want to contribute to the exploitation of my culture. It's been commercialized. So, you know, I'm, I'm protesting mm. to some degree. Speaking of St. Patrick's, they're not to cut you off. Did y'all see that they're bringing back a uh, ghost? Like, I'm sorry. What? Wait, wait, wait. Like power ghost. Yeah. I thought they canceled the whole show. No. Like all the power books got canceled. He's coming back from the dead. <laughs> they, are they taxiderming him? Apparently he didn't die. He just got shot in the chest, fell off a balcony and, they spent an entire season talking about his death. Listen, man, I don't know what the writers are going to do. <laughs> but Amari, Wait, but what is he coming back in? Amari Hardwick posted something on his Instagram. Um, on St. Patrick's Day? No. Oh. This was like last week. <laughs> but I thought about it when St. Patrick's Day. I'm like, I'm, I'm done, though. I'm done. BMF is, they had a, a Tupac on there that looked like, I don't know what, I, I, I'm just done. Is that episode out yet? I haven't gotten to that episode if it did. No. I, I don't know if it's out. I just, I saw the... the Wasn't there an AirPod in the actor's ear or something like that? I believe I in saw it. PMF? Tupac, yeah. I saw that on my timeline. I don't believe that. You saw the picture of it? Yeah, there was a screen grab. Someone said there's an AirPod in homie's ear in the middle of a scene. There was a zesty... Oh, putting an AirPod in a Tupac... <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. Just showing he's still alive. <laughs> that you, you guys aren't following oh, the clue. Oh, okay. They got AirPods uh, in Cuba. Yeah, 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 I know yeah, some yeah, communism yeah, yeah. going on, but yeah, they, yeah, they got some AirPods down there for Pac for sure. And you only get one because it has yeah, to be, you know, yeah. distributed equally for everyone. I get it. Yeah. Um, someone posted a photo of the guy that's playing Tupac in BMF, and it admittedly looked like a zesty photo, and <laughs> someone tweeted it as uh, "hit them they up." <laughs> Said hit him up. Yeah, I, I got it. no, no, I got no, no. It. I just was. I got it. It's all good. 
When it, was Tupac hanging out with BMF? I don't know, man. I have no idea. Not not saying it didn't happen though, because it, it probably definitely did. I never heard that story, but it's not far fetched though. Be Meech and them, they was when they, they was popping down in Atlanta, it was they was hanging out with everybody. So I mean, all this means is we're gonna get a 54 part Vlad interview about Tupac hanging out with BMF. So, you know, I'm excited. Um, but back to my weekend. I didn't celebrate, but I took Amara to the park because it was really nice this weekend. Um, tell me if you think Child Protective Services will be at my door by tonight. All right, check. That. Wait, is this you? This is me. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo. <laughs> what, the <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? I misjudged the slide. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? You already yeeted Amara out of that bitch. Yo, nah, what the fuck? Give my friend credit. Wrong? He held on to Amara the whole time. He Yo, never oh, let her. No, I sacrificed myself to save Amara. Yo, look, Yo, dog, F- what the fuck is wrong with you, though. bro? Like, For real, Yo, though. Look at that. <laughs> That's really good ball security. Yo, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? You can't tell in this video. I hit my head really fucking hard. I saw on the it. Ba- I have I a it. cut Look in the, the back of my head. in Rory's face. <laughs> but I tried to turn to cover. This was like me trying to protect. Where <laughs> my, father, my fatherly instincts kicked in. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> that boom. Head. Oh, you hit Dog. your head on the slide. Oh. Yeah. Dog. Very... Very hard. Yeah, the like slight delay and then Amara starting to cry is so <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yo, what is wrong with you, man? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? <laughs> Did you hear that thud? <laughs> Yo. You know the funny thing about being a parent, like one of the many funny things, your kids are just subjected to the dumb shit that you do. Like Amara yeah. wouldn't have done this dolo. This is no. just Rory's. Like this will be fun for she us. Was, she was forced to do this. <laughs> she just got her. bullied. She just got forced into going. Yo, but why didn't the slide. you like put your your sneakers like put your heels on the slide and kind of slow yourself down? So. Look how he came out. Like you just got your legs up. <laughs> like, came. put your fucking sneaker down. Your leg is out. Yeah, like, what are you doing? Dog? Your knee is poking off. First of all, you're lucky you didn't fly. You see that angle that you didn't fly off the slide at I that know, angle. I see, caught myself. See, that's all that starch you be putting on your trousers, man. <laughs> 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 it's a good track leader right there. Stop putting those starch on them fucking wait, pants right, of yours, question. man. When you were in the tube part of this, did you know it was about to go to shit? Or was it just coming out of this a surprise? So... Amara and I do slides all the time. I thought she was ready for like the big kid slide because she likes slides so much. <laughs> yeah. um, in the tube, I was like, oh, this is really pussy because we were barely moving okay. in the tube. <laughs> and then right before the tube, you can't see it from this angle. It like drops aggressively. Okay. So we went from like, I was almost scooting yeah. in the tube. I was like, this, is, this was whack. Yeah. And then that shit dropped like a water slide and I saw my life flash before my eyes. Look thinking. at the curve the whole slide makes. <laughs> so that's like you, you're, Roy you're barely moving slide. and then you come out this shit down like on a vertical angle. Yo, that is fucking crazy. That slide isn't even safe for teenagers. Well, what? I'm sure that it is. Like Jersey <laughs> City needs to check the codes of this slide. That slide is so fucking dangerous. No, Rory, your, your big heavy ass is causing more velocity, so therefore you're, velocity. Coming, you're coming down the slide faster than a, than a kid would because you have more weight on Because I'm fat. Is what you're Yo, I, I, I get it. I get you're just not a, no, born. you're not a child. Yo, that, the form you have with Amar is really impressive, though. Like, you, you got you, that well, thank you. Yeah. Talk. Thankfully, yeah, you didn't you, fumble you, the you, football. Yeah, you, you, you. Oh, all I cared protected about Amara. Was, yeah, you was making Amara. sure she was okay. Yeah, she was good. I it's mean, it kind of like, oh her. my god, in the background. After oh. she cut the video, I immediately like once we made sure obviously Amara was okay. I was like, can we leave, please? Yeah, now can you, you just, have can to, we just you can have to leave? leave the park after that. I just can't like, now we're going over here. It's like, yo, get out of the park, man. There was a lot of people there. I know it looks like it's an empty playground, but this is a beautiful Sunday. There were so many people there. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> I was like, yo, let's can we can we leave right now? <laughs> right I just I could feel the judging <laughs> eyes of all parents going like, wow, that's a <laughs> shitty parent. Yeah. Like they definitely was like, he's an alcoholic. Like, like, like idiot, did you not <laughs> see that fucking Roy, that there's Roy a drop a, in that his slide? Wine tumbler in the other hand. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, was, you definitely I held was Amara. Definitely sober in this. You held Amara like how them girls be fighting in the club and they hold their drink up when they like about to fall. <laughs> and they That's, never they the drink that drink ain't spilled. You ain't spilling that drink. You ain't you didn't spill Amara. You know, Amara's legs kicking too. Oh my god, yo, that's so no funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad Amara's is okay. I was trying to absorb the impact at this point and keep her away from the ground. Can you play it from the beginning, just on full speed? I can't wait quick, till Amara is like sound. at the age where she can look at this video and look at, uh, at Rory like, yo, you are just. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I wish I would have. Been Please wrong. listen to. I did this so. Oh that's a problem. <laughs> yo, you fell out of that shit. It sounded like somebody had some sneakers in the dryer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Are you know when the sneakers in the drive machine, you like, Just yo, tumbling. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Wait. Oh my God. <laughs> Damn, man. Rory, that shit hurt. I know your ass hurt. I know your head hurt. My lower back hurt. Yeah, man. That it was, is it was so Rory intense. definitely got up and looked at the looked at the slide with both his hands on his hips and like, why would they put this here? I wish oh, he kept rolling. I definitely looked and blamed the slide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The slide slid. It did what it was supposed to you do. Start, you start cursing, like, sit up there like, no, who, the who designed this? <laughs> yeah. Who put this here? I want to speak to the architect. That's hilarious. Well, That's I'm glad hilarious. I'm glad Amara was okay. She was a faker, man. Within two seconds, she was laughing. Ready to go I back think on she it? was just kind of stunned, like, because it yeah, came out of nowhere. Her. She fell. You fell. Like, you know, just like, oh, shit. And yeah, then, I don't think she got hurt at all. I think it was just like surprise. Oh, she was fine. You said and one. I, I don't get the reference. You fall and one? No? Oh, like, as yeah. it's about. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> is Amara the basketball? You heard Julian? No, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you gotta we say. Miss, we all like miss if you're a comedian cool, on man. stage and one yeah. of your jokes are late, you're like, nah, it's cool. Like, right. <laughs> like fuck it, I got 10 more minutes. <laughs> like, there's nothing y'all can do to get me off this stage. I'm here for 10 more minutes. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> Yo, the yo, main, the main act is not even ready yet. I know someone <laughs> listening right now just paused that shit was like, man, that nigga sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> Still listening. Still here, man. Yeah. Hey, take it from someone that has experience. You just got to keep shooting. That's it, man. Yeah. Keep shooting. They're, they're going to fall. You know flat. who's going to start shooting on a podcast? Do you feel like social media has helped or hurt me? That's a good question. I think helped. To be quite honest. Really? Yeah. In the beginning, if you remember, Meek on Instagram was like kind of a thing. When he still had the pre-Drake shit, mm -hmm. when he still had the mystique of this is the Philly, I hit spitter, I'm going to sound like a horrible, but mm -hmm. yeah. Who we thought Meek was, was great for him to be involved in social media and Meek was posting memes like he would... He was damn near like a meme page at one point on Instagram. He was mm -hmm. very funny. Like Meek was great on the internet with Mystique. Now it's just free for all. And even though he looks nuts, I think it's helping him. I think it's keep, because if he's selling 6K without the social media rant, like, yeah, you need this. You need some type of attention. So wait, you, so you, you agree that 6K for Meek is a fail? Imagine but if you, he didn't have social media, we, we would have <laughs> sold three. See, I'm on the opposite side of that. I think, I think social media. I think social media has kind of like it caused people to kind of turn on Meek and laugh at him, and kind of like now he's like it's not even it's like it's like he's a meme now. You understand what I'm saying? It's almost like people are waiting for Meek to post something so they can make fun of him. Mm -hmm. But I think he's like I don't think I don't think they're waiting for this point. You do you? Yes. After the Puff situation a few weeks ago, I think Meek has been 100% leaning into our perception of him on social media. But that's what I'm saying. Even that, he's giving us more <laughs> stuff to purposely clown. Even that and situation. And mixed in with some real shit. Even that situation. He was number one trending, I think, that week, right, on social media, mm -hmm. on Twitter. You drop a, a, a six pack and you do 6,000 units. Like, we said, I don't think that Meek even had any plans of dropping that before that that shit happened. I mean, it's it's smart to try to capitalize off of being number one trending, you know, on so on Twitter. It's it's, it's smart to, to capitalize off of that, but... But not when that's your first impression of being independent. independent right. And now you put a value on who you are as an artist in the current market. Only as funky as your last cuts. Right now, Meek Mill is valued at 6,000 units, which we know Meek his entire career has been valued much higher than that. Mm -hmm. What was the most Meek sold first week? Probably. Uh, it would have to be the championships 40. album, right? 
Or what was the one um, with the money. red covered? Dreams worth more than money. I would say either one of those. When he when he was with Nikki, I know that first week was pretty oh, high. Oh, yeah. Champions did uh, 229,000. Which is, dreams, I mean, is great. Dreams worth more than money was 245, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, album sales have changed drastically. Oh, absolutely. For all artists. Um, you mean Dreams and Nightmares? No. But I mean, even even then, I, it's a it's a wild okay. jump. Mm. Uh, yeah, two, dreams was more than one. It was two forty six, which is fire. Yeah, it was pain 90, didn't do bad. Ninety five. Yeah. yeah, it didn't do bad. Ninety five first week, expensive pain. What was that? Twenty twenty two. Twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. October one first. That's I mean that's really good in twenty twenty one. Um, and I, did he have a single with that? He complained how that was. That was a quiet promoted. rollout too. Yeah, he was pretty uh, mad at Atlantic. Uh, it, it was just a lot of snipe, snipe campaigns, like skinning buses and billboards and stuff. But there wasn't too much promotion outside of that. Mm. I just think he needs to get more creative <coughs> with his roles. You can't brag about the independent shit and your only rollout be crazy tweets. I think that's helpful for him and keeps him in the conversation, but it's not translating to music. Which is why I think we get tweets like, I need to start a podcast because he's seeing the only thing that's really getting traction right now is the shit he's saying, for which, better or for worse. Which I think that's a good amount of self awareness to be like, okay, like maybe my voice is still valuable in this space, but it might not be in the music per se. I go viral every time I tweet, I do some, some shit I say always is on the timeline. My value has now transitioned to this part of the culture. Do you think Meek owes us Hell an apology? No, I don't... Nah, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, I don't... I, I get it, but nah, man. Why? Meek, Meek's didn't... He did So Meek is, like, no longer valuable in music, so now he's gonna... Now he's valuable in just what he says on social media, but so now let's do a podcast. I think he would do very well uh, on a timeline, like, socially on a podcast where ads are sold. Versus people having to go to Apple Music or Spotify and finding his music, I think it would I think it would bode better for him. I think currently, people, I don't I don't know how long lasting it was what it would be, but I think that he could break out and get a lot of listens. I also think if he had a really good production team that would know how to cut up the dumb shit that he's saying, I think that it would actually be. Yeah, I but think a we, lot of people would listen. Do we know if Meek can podcast? That's like, what I'm saying. Like, like I, for the first I'm, few episodes, I, for sure, because it's Meek. No matter what, there's gonna be a lot of eyes. Even people yeah, that want to go to hate on get, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get Sorry, guests, get other sure. rappers to come sit yes. out. You're gonna go yeah. that route. You have like, to you'd have to dress it up. I'm assuming he's. Nah, I'm I'm under the impression that he's talking like he tweets. If he goes on there and starts talking about prison reform, throw the whole fucking podcast out. No but that's what he wants to shit. discuss. He would have to. That's what he's saying. He wants to do that. He but you think that Meek is gonna have a podcast and not discuss? I think he needs to do the formula that we see with like Cam and Mace. Be the reactive guy. Talk about shit in the culture. Be funny. Oh, you guys, you guys are too about, about, about to make me no, no, no. shit he's on Meek too, and Meek I don't want to do it. Meek is too, he's too current and too, and too, and too relevant. If he thinks he's like a Martin Luther Meek, keep it, bro. No one wants to hear you talk about prison reform. That That's not going to bring eyeballs to your podcast. Okay, also back to my original point of someone going through the prison system doesn't mean that they should be the face or the leader of it because they may not know how to properly speak about it. And this is not me shitting on Meek as far as how articulate he is. But how do we know Meek can get on a microphone and properly discuss prison reform? Just because he's went through it doesn't mean that you know how to pot about it. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying that he has to get on the mic and, you know, but bring people in. Like, I don't go the, you know, jump right into the bring rappers on route. I think you go into bringing people that can speak more in depth about prison reform and things like that, things that he's really into, businesses and, and you know, Go that route. I would like to see me go that route. I don't want to see him jump, you know, straight into just sitting down with other artists and rappers. And I don't know. Well, then he shouldn't have a podcast. Like y'all are in y'all are in the podcast industry. Y'all see everybody else's podcast failing. Y'all know there is no money in podcasting. Y'all see all these celebrities come out with podcasts and they fucking flop all the time. You can't just go on there and just meet talking about all that shit. No one cares. No Cam one is gonna listen to that. Cam and Mace are in their own lane. They're an anomaly because both of them we've known their entire careers outside of music have had hilarious personalities. And we know Cam can debate with the best of them. He can be funny. He can be witty. Mm -hmm. We know Cam. I'm not saying Meek isn't that, but that's not what he's known for. Mm -hmm. 
what makes us think that he'll be able to just carry a podcast? I don't even think advertisers out the gate would even attach themselves to that in this pod market. Outside of two or three episodes, is it going to last with views? I is mean, me, I, is me going to ask the right questions about all of that, all of that remains prison be, reform? All of that remains to be seen. But I'm just saying that I think that Meek's value is still more in music. Agreed. I just think that he needs a different level of focus when it comes to his music. I think that he needs a different um, level of create creativity. Put himself in the ro different rooms with different creators and things like that. And just focus on that because he is first and will always be first an artist an MC a rapper um I just think that he's trying maybe trying try some different sounds a lot of Meek's sounds is kind of similar it's like I feel like I heard that record already um I think that's it I don't think Meek should even focus on podcasting I think if there's like a passion thing and he wants to do it like you know every now and then sure go for it but don't just abandon music and say, okay, well, your value is in but, talking. Well, I, yeah, I don't, uh, Julian said that, but I don't think, he, Meek never said that. He, I don't think Meek would ever abandon music. Uh, he never said that. He I just said that, that he has a lot to say and that he would like a podcast. I Put think it in the a, music. Yeah, huh? Put it in the music. It's not translating. Uh, he says, he literally said, I want to be a part of black media. I'm never going to tell a man who is, still has life in him not to do what he wants to do. I will right. always give advice on to how he could possibly do it. And I think that, like I said, if he had an amazing production team and he ever released episodes almost like how Carisha did, not regularly, not twice a week, not even once a week, you did it maybe once a month or once every couple of weeks, mm -hmm. I think that there's value. And I think he has an audience that would sit up there and listen to him, even if it's not us. I think he has an audience. I think it's cool for him to do that. I mean, because, I mean, I think he does control his own narrative by doing that. Um but still, man, Meek's value is 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 the music. The podcast, the podcast fan base is the smartest fan base out there. And well, they're already on which podcast you're talking about. Just the overall the podcast fan base is, I think, of of higher intellect and can smell the bullshit quicker than most fan bases mm -hmm. because they listen for longer, they pay attention. It's it's different than just listening to some quick radio shit or watching a, a movie, whatever. If Meek gets uh, Michael Rubin on there to talk about owning your masters or some like cliche fucking business plan just because he can get Michael Rubin, the podcast fan base he thinks he's going to grab is going to laugh at it. That's because what, the that's surface the shit he thinks he can maybe get to is already in the podcast market now at a way higher level. I don't think the podcast fan base needs to hear about owning your masters or being independent or what Michael Rubin's business plan is, it just isn't going to really connect. See, see, and that's the problem right there. I think that he needs to spend less time, no, nothing against Michael Rubin, but spend less time with Michael Rubin and start spending more time with Rick Rubin. <laughs> mm. That's funny. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I think mm -hmm. that's, because Rick Rubin, he tells you, I don't know about, you know, technology and all this. I don't play instruments. I just know what's, what feels good. Mm -hmm. Meek needs to be around people that are proven in the world of music that just know when the music feels good. Mm -hmm. Simple. Like, just focus on that. Change who's in the room when you're creating, things like that. Sit down with different people. Um, I yeah, mean, I always handle like your business and, you know, shout out to, to Michael Rubin, but I think spend less time there and more time focusing on the sound and the feel of your music. Nah, he can't be near Rick Rubin. Why? Because Rick Rubin has this ability to make Something you say that's not deep, almost sound deep, just because he has long hair. Mm -hmm. Like, he'll be like, so the Roly is actually just for motivational. It's not, you didn't buy it for you, Meek. Mm -hmm. You bought it to motivate us. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Rameek, this is it. Mm -hmm. That's how I think Rick Rubin is going to look at his music. No. He's going to make something <laughs> deep when it doesn't need to be deep. Nah, I don't think it's, that's fun. I don't think it's that, but I think he just needs to spend more time focusing on, on just the music, man. Um, to, before we close though, does he owe us an apology if he wants to get in the media space? Why? He's one of multiple rappers that clowned all of us for having podcasts. Well, I mean, early on breakfast have clubs, that. I have podcasts, you know, streets don't care about podcasts. Every, he's not one of maybe 10 rappers I can think of that clown podcasting and then try to get into it. I mean, but that's, that's always part of it. Like people clown stuff. And then when they see it's lucrative and 
you know, it's how much money is in it. And then you can control your own narrative. You have your own voice and, you know, then feelings and emotions and, and things change. I don't, I don't put much into that. That, that happens. That's part of everything in life. Like it is what it is. No, if I, if I clown something publicly and I want to go do it, I'm going to start with, yeah, I was wrong. Eh, I mean, I guess. Everybody's integrity. I also don't think that many people know that me clown. Like, I don't think people retain that. Not, no, not only that, people don't care. No one gives a shit. Nobody cares. I'm saying us as, as podcasters oh, I don't that pay fuck. attention to it. We didn't I don't know that involved. until you just said it. Listen, I've been in this game for a long time. <laughs> you came in this game as a hater? Overlord. As a potter. As an overlord. <laughs> I've been an over, overlord to this pod shit since 2015, all right? So, Rory, I want to know if you still stand in our business on your stupid ass take you made. Which one? That the clock is on. That the clock is on for sexy red when she's about to have song of the summer. Mm. Hey, we got to stop doing that. So many songs of the summer. Mom. Yeah, like we got to stop. Doing I haven't that. named one song of the summer. No, I'm not, I'm not to, talking about okay. you. I'm just saying, like in general, we got to stop hearing a record before the summer and be like song of the summer. But no, now it, is the time that starts the song of the summer. Yeah. We're in that that second quarter era where we start to decide what's the song. Yeah, I don't even know the song. Get it sexy. You ever seen that? The Get It Sexy? Where uh, do y'all be at? I saw yeah, I saw a rolling loud clip. Was that did she premiere it there? Not even just her song. It's the it's the song with all the dance videos. People have been connecting it to old like um. Damaris, we're not on TikTok. It's not about TikTok. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I don't support TikTok. Shot Where, you, where's dance Twitter. videos at? Twitter. Oh. They've been on Twitter. They've been on Instagram. Elliot won't stop posting them. Like the young boys is in there. Well, Elliot's posting them. Though. The young. What are the young boys doing to it? They're da- it's, she has a dance that goes to it. It's reminiscent of like the crank that yank or like okay. all of those type of old dances. She has a dance that goes with it. Not at her rolling out performance. I will pull up. Like I will go on her page. No wait. I, just since we're on sexy red, her singing is sis's part is the funniest clip. I thought Did it was you guys great. See us over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. great. That's how I yeah, it. Was, I thought it was hilarious. That's her personality. <laughs> She's hilarious. That's perfect. Because I don't know what the fuck sis is saying. She's so fucking funny. <laughs> Um, All right, I'm with y'all. This is funny. Sexy this Red is, dope. is funny. I fuck it's with Sexy Personality Red. is great. Great personality. Please get that off. But the no, they. Well, <laughs> but how? No, go ahead. Get your shit off. Were you distracted by what looked like a vagina on the screen? No, that was a uh, my favorite Intamin's cake. I know what that is. Oh, okay. Um, mm-hmm. vagina. I just. I think Sexy Red is dope. I think she she's her personality is great. I think she's gonna have a bigger career outside of music than she does with music mm. just because of her personality. But can you understand how like some of the more talented female rappers yeah. would look at Sexy Red and how many people champion and push her and support her and be like, what the fuck? I mean, probably same goes for male rappers too of the bullshit that they push as opposed to the people that have talent. I, I still stand by the clock is on. I don't think the clock is on for her well, the as clock, far as a human the being. The clock like, is on for all of us, but well, <laughs> how much time? Every day, it's <laughs> how much time closer to clock. being stuffed by a, right. what are they called again? Tax Yo, yeah. No. Um, would you do that with a family member? No, bro. Really. Okay. No. Remember that trend that was going on for a while at funerals where they would dress them up and do like a club? Right, like prop them, prop up. the dead body up, and like yeah. put a, put a bottle of Casamigos in his hand. I don't think it was a trend. I think it's still going on. Yeah, no, that's still that's still that's happening. Sick. It slowed down because of COVID, but after that, I think it ramped back up. They had somebody during COVID because you couldn't have funerals, so they had like the body propped up like at a drive-through, <laughs> and like I'm, yeah, I think I'm joking. You can pull that up and look at it. It was a drive-through funeral, and the body was like propped up. Like one of my favorite COVID memories. COVID was what a, a drive-through thing. funeral. Remember when, the, not crazy remember when the Pope was squirting holy water on the baby's foreheads with a squirt gun because he didn't want to touch anyone? Could have been worse. He had a squirt gun. He was shooting kids in the face with a squirt gun. He probably was shooting kids. I was going to say, I mean, I better saying, than <laughs> what he used the rest of his staff. <laughs> yeah. I thought, finally, we got this guy under control. Yeah, yeah. exactly. At least um, it's water. Right. Um, Damaris, my stupid ass take. I still am on my stupid ass take. Oh. I think that's, Song, if you say it's going to be song in the summer, I believe you. I think she'll be around. I think it's a a very strong contender. I think that and Gia Glow, very strong contender. 
All Have right. y'all heard the song? Which one? I heard Sexy Red song. The Get It Sexy? Mm-hmm. I'm sure it sounds like the other ones. Do you think she puts out an album and is successful? The album? If they want to keep giving her great records that show her personality, she'll be around and then end up doing something I outside think of this music. Is, I think this is the new blueprint for artists, though. It's been that way, though. Yeah. As like, far as I, just putting out singles. I just put out singles, do features. Like, I'm... Because now it's like, again, you drop an album, people listen to it for a couple weeks, maybe a month if it's really good. And then after that, you don't even hear nobody speaking on it. How, how does this transition, Damaris? Like, let, let's say my take is extremely stupid and she's going to be here forever. How does it switch? Nobody like, when, ever once her fan be base becomes 27, like she's then, a Republican. Then what happens? Okay. Oh, she's a big Trumpy. Yeah. Nobody ever says she was going to be here forever, though. No, I don't think anybody in this climate, in this music climate, is going to be here forever. Oh, she's like Lauren Hill. But I think she's going to last longer than what people think. And she has lasted she's, longer than she's what people thought. She's lasted longer than I thought. Yes. So I, I stand corrected there for sure. Um, you didn't hear Julie. Yeah, we did. He said we she's him. like Lauren Hill. No, I heard. I just ignored it. <laughs> I think you guys are sleeping on Sexy Red. I think she's here to stay. I don't know what her personality is before is, Sexy is, Red. Her personality honest. is... Julian, are you able to have a conversation without being nope. an asshole? It's really difficult. But, uh, <laughs> like it's just, Do you, you ever know. fight that urge, though? I deal with it, but I, I fight the urge a lot. Yeah. That's like part of being like human, Julian. Like We all want to be assholes 24-7. No, nah, I mean, this is the future of hip-hop. This is hip-hop. I'm, You're being sarcastic, but he yeah, said it, something there. It, it, no, it is. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm Your not condescending lying. tone, unfortunately, is, yeah. is correct. Yeah. yeah. This is the future of hip hop. So, yeah, I think she'll be around here for this business model. Sure. They do Rolling Loud every other week. I'm sure she'll headline all the time. Listen, man, there's a place just, for sexy, but, right? But then what? Girls want to shake ass. They want to throw ass. Like, it's not. Y'all keep saying girls want to shake ass. Girls want to throw ass. Like, sexy red doesn't even. I think Sexy Red's fan base is more younger teens and young and a lot of young boys than it is girls. What do young? She doesn't really make twerk music. She makes some twerk music, but the majority of her music is like hood gangster shit. This is, she kind of reminds me of the Ying Yang Twins. I could see that. That's, I, yeah, I'm, that's I'm the type of following what you said. Yeah, that's the type of music she makes. She doesn't just make like at, like girls don't hear Sexy Red and be like, oh, I want to shake ass to Sexy girls Red. Girls hear anything and shake ass. True, yeah, but like y'all not, doing fucking, y'all, 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 y'all not doing the fucking waltz. That's not a sexy red song. It's a Drake song. Yeah, but it's a sexy red song. They shake their ass at the hook that she does. That's what they play outside. But there's a anyway, like I was saying, there's a dance to go with this song. This is like a real long doing. dance. No, that's just her dancing. But oh. the beginning part that she was doing with the football player boy, like that's like a this dance part. That's becoming like a thing. Yeah, her personality is going to carry everything. That's to me, that's the business model. So as far as they want to take her personality is as far as I think she'll go career-wise. I, I don't think like music is going to be the end-all be-all for her how by, long before Sexy by the Red's, end of the year. How long before Sexy Red's reality show? Because mm. it's coming. I can see it. It's definitely coming. They like, would have who's to pay be her too big daddy? of a bag for her to do a reality show. They would have to pay her a pretty big bag. I mean, listen. Reality show. They got, they got, these platforms got it to give her. Adam 22 kicked down the door as far as doing a reality show of who's going to fuck his wife. I could see Sexy Red doing a who's going to be my baby daddy show and then actually have to get pregnant by the winner. That's We've reached that point in life. That could happen. Then that, that could happen. But I don't think that will. Yeah, I don't think it's Sexy happen. Red though. But that, you're not, you're not wrong. You don't think, you think that's out of Sexy Red's wheelhouse? A little bit, yeah. I mean, she, so? she, she, because she's she's in a relationship TV with her, fake. but not only that, she's in a relationship with her, her baby, her current baby father, mm-hmm. right? Yes, yeah, so I don't see her like doing that. No, Sex but we've seen reality shows where people are looking for love and find love and have family. So it's not it it happened, but you're saying directly going to it like, who wants to be my next? I guess what I'm saying is it's getting. Whether people want to admit it or not, tough for Cardi to some degree right now. We think Sexy Red is going to be okay. T- tough for Cardi what? To catch one. A record? Yeah. 
Don't you're you saying, just call you, one. I'm, I'm not here to, to shit on Cardi, but a, Cardi, not Cardi. Right. No, I know, but he's saying. But he's you, a, it's getting tough for her to catch one. I'm like, she caught one, yeah, and then the last one was a caught, one. and then the last one was a caught. So like, it's not getting tough for her to catch one. It's tough for the Cardi to catch one. I thought the freestyle was a good no, promo. We're talking, talking about sexy. sexy. I'm saying it's tough for you're Cardi saying, right now. Cardi caught 15 ones, and it's tough for her now. Look at the longevity. It's been what five years, and it's tough for one of the biggest. Artist, period. Forget female or male. We think Sexy Red is going to be able to maintain it if Cardi B is having trouble. Are you talking about trouble? We oh, were saying because no, no. she currently just caught another one. I yeah, know, no. but she's in the phase of her career that Cardi was with Bodak Yellow. Like, she's in the beginning. Yeah. We think she'll be able to maintain when Cardi's having trouble? No, I don't think that... When Car every artist, period, is having trouble? I just don't think she's going to be the savior that's going to re redo the business model of staying relevant with your music. No, of course not. But at not. the same time, I, I, you know, like Sexy Red, she, right now in her career, I, she probably feel like, yo, I didn't think I would be this big or get this yeah, far. Like, yeah. So this is a win. So oh, anything I, after this for her is like, okay, that's just on top of like, you know, the cake. Like, all right, cool. But I don't think that Sexy Red has any intent of like, being the biggest artist ever or being the big biggest female artist ever. Like, well, maybe. I think she's just yeah, enjoying the moment and, and just accepting everything that's coming to her right now. Having She's having a lot of fucking fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, she has a family, obviously. So it's Sexy's just like, been I think making music herself. for a long time, too. Like, longer than what people think she's been making music for. Because Sexy had a, vi a song go viral. I remember it used to be viral on Twitter. We didn't know who she was, but she did that -na 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 flip, like, mm. with the guns. That was like, when did that go viral? Like 2014, 2015? Yeah, like it was a long time ago. But I mean, oh, the Vanessa Carlton. He flipped, yeah. The bah, 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 with the guns on yes. it. Uh, that's a great record. Yeah, it's her. I mean, when we played the uh, Booty Hole Brown record for the first time on the podcast, that was a masterpiece. Pound Town. Pound Town, I was like, guys, this is like the seventh Pound video Town she's really. To Zion. Pound Town was like a year old when it popped. She yeah. did like seven videos of Pound Town before it really got crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. Gotta pound it up. So no, I, I respect, and I'm not hating on her success. I, I do like her personality. I think she's made fun songs that have purpose in hip hop for sure. I've, I've had fun to her records with people. It's great. My thing was just the longevity of this strategy for all of music, not just Sexy Red. We're just using her as an example because she's one of the bigger artists that's focused just on the single thing and her personality. Imagine How long is this model gonna, the clock is on for this model is what I'm saying. Why do we put yeah. so much weight in longevity with music? Yeah, like well, imagine if they had podcasts when Lean With It Rock With It came out or Crank That came out. What, uh, All those, what do you there, mean, there were a bunch of people saying that that wasn't like, that that was, they were destroying hip hop with yeah. snap music too. Which is what that's, a lot of her stuff reminds me That's happened since of. the 80s. They were, that's happened in hip hop since its inception. The generation after every single time was killing hip hop. Yeah, but what I'm saying, Nelly was killing hip hop, and now we look at Nelly as like a real MC. But that's another thing too. We got to. We I, I'm with I'm with not calling so whoever this wrote shit, it. a lot of this shit. Yeah. Not calling this shit hip hop. It is. I'm with that. It's hip hop though. I call a lot of is shit it? rap, and it's not hip hop. I'll say it's rap. It's not hip hop. Is it hip hop? The derivative I, of hip hop. It is hip hop. Now you just changed. See, you but it is derivative. Is no. I don't, I don't think rest. so. And I think that I think that the people that were some of the creators of hip hop would agree that this is not hip hop. No one wants to hear that early hip hop. That's goop. Do, 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 no, nobody, do, do, nobody saying too. nobody saying you want to hear that. There was hip hop way after that. That was still hip hop. Look, there can be a there's still there are still people that are currently still putting out hip hop. There can music. be a golden era of something, but it doesn't negate the other forms of it that also exist. I'm not saying so negate look, look. anything. I'm just saying like this. We just need to start again. Start identifying what things are and putting them in their proper perspective. That's all I'm saying. But the way like rock and like roll, you can't give me Italian so food and be like, "Yo, this is this is Chinese." I well, they both that. have noodles, neuters. Mm. Still, it's not Chinese food. But the way rock and roll expanded, where they had to make subcategories after it got so big, I think hip hop's in the same realm as that. Like, there's punk rock. There's all different types of rock and roll. I think hip hop is the same thing. That's trap. That's underground. That's real hip hop. I think but it's like, all within the same question thing. Is why do we always place so much, uh, so much, uh, it, like value in longevity? The world changes. Things are supposed to change. Things are supposed to evolve. You're asking why I want to champion longevity in music. I'm. It's just not. But it, that's not commonplace. Like, look at the history of hip hop. How many phases we've had? Like, we're looking for something that's never existed. And some of our most classic, like, what's songs, what's the longest era in hip hop? Yeah, some of our most classic songs and eras of hip hop 
especially with us. Nas just up. put out three albums. Okay, okay. Not album. everybody is Nas. What, two people have I'm been not, making good music for the for the entirety of the genre. I'm saying hip hop has gone through so many phases, and they some longer than others. They come and go, but that's the, that's the nature of music. That's just how this shit works. I'm, Why do I'm we with you put on, so I'm, much I'm, weight on like? I think I, I always champion longevity. I'm not saying just music. Like I said, I think that Sexy Red is going to have. She's going to be around for a while because even if it's not music, her personality is going to keep her around for a very long time. Yeah. So whether she moves into TV, film, you know what I mean? A uh, talk show, whatever it is, I think that her personality is going to warrant her longevity. Now, she may not be putting out hit songs and going, you know, things like that too much longer. But I think that her sexy red, she is going, her personality is going to keep her around for a very long time. Yeah. And so I, longevity, I, but I also, longevity, I also don't see what's that's, wrong that's still with, a, a thing to champion. I think that's the main problem with hip hop is not championing longevity. Like continue oh, well, to well, contribute to the, but not hip to the genre. Not hip hop music. Music has turned into a lick. It's a hustle. It's a, let me get lit here so I can do this thing over here. Like, let me get a viral moment. Let me get a viral record. Let me, you know, get a bunch of streams here. And then I can go and do this thing. Like, people started using the music as a vehicle to really get to where it, which is, I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? I think that still you need integrity in everything that you do. But I understand this era and this generation yeah, but of how quickly things could happen for you. Like, even we go back to um, Bryson Tiller, when his record took off, when his song took off. Uh -huh. He was still, I think, working at a pizza spot. When that record took off. And he was like, yo, I didn't even have too much other other songs done. Like when that song took off and now people looking at me like, oh, we need an album. He's like, what the fuck? So he was doing something where it was like he didn't know it was going to pop for him. <laughs> but now, obviously, he's had longevity. He's been around for a while. He's been able to put out good songs, good albums. Like, you know, it, 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 it could take off too. But a lot of people now, they use it as just, I don't even care about this shit. Like, I just want a quick lick and then let me go and do this other thing. I I just think it's the most important thing to hip hop culture is longevity. My Crazy Life by YG turned 10 to Longevity or integrity? Well, it's, I mean, because you is there integrity anywhere? <laughs> no, yeah. longevity. I just if you if you want to put integrity into hip hop, that's a a tough thing to put into if you I, really want to get down to all your favorites killed each other where's you the integrity put, in that you should, no put, fucking you, should put, you should put integrity into anything that you're creating into anything that you're doing well that would depend integrity. on your definition of integrity there's only one definition of integrity what the one where you set up your mans and then you know like the, the, the hip hop it's so it's such a selfish sport there's so little integrity in this shit what? I think to place that above all is like what are we talking about no it's, I, integ integrity can be a perception like Let's use Sexy Red, for example. I don't think it's bad, the stuff she talks about or, you know, shakes her ass, all the shit that people could say, like, how could you do that as a woman? Have some integrity. I think she has integrity. I don't think her doing that takes away from her integrity. But some people would think, as a woman, you should have some integrity and not speak that way, move that way, dance that way. Like, integrity is a perception. It really is. But that, mm, yeah. I don't know about that one. So, Maul, would you like me to Could you, read the I mean, definition I, rap, of integrity rapping about, I mean, it's it's definitely a way bigger systematic conversation. But you could say glorifying selling drugs to a community does not have much integrity in it. Exactly. It doesn't. You could sell drugs with integrity. Senseless violence, people could say. Of course, it comes from a you certain place. You absolutely sell drugs with integrity. Yeah, just not to your family. Everyone else's. No, but I'm, you can sell drugs with integrity is what I'm saying. Explain that to me. So you're talking about from the business side? Yeah, from the business side. Yeah, of course. Can, but at the end yeah. of the day, you're still I think poisoning you're, people. I think you're we're talking less community. about integrity and this is more into the morality side of things. There's poisoning shit that you eat every day that you support. Okay, they I don't agree. have any integrity either. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, not, I don't think Whole Foods has integrity. With integrity. At least those things are FDA approved. <laughs> At least, yeah. They put that little sticker on there. The like, highest yeah. form of let you feel like let you feel like somebody with a lab fed dog shit. Let you feel like somebody with a lab coat like looked over it before they sold it to you. Put that little FDA sticker on there. I mean, once you get into selling certain lifestyles, integrity is you can move with integrity, but the overall thing you're doing is doesn't have integrity. 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 The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. 
Yeah, it's more, it's very morality centered. I think I, I think there can be a um, big, uh, you can absolutely sell drugs with integrity. <laughs> I think there can be a redemption quality in ending it and realizing what you did was wrong and you were put in a position that you kind of had no other choice. I understand it, but without the redemption part, is there any integrity? That's kind of like what people are giving Meek a lot of shit for when he's talking about prison reform and squashing beefs and then he goes on on the radar and talks about just shooting ops, spinning the block. Like there needs to be some yeah, consistency but, yeah, in this you, integrity. But this, but yeah, but that's again, that's the art. It's art form. I understand. It's the thing. Like, you know, you can't, we're not sitting down talking about Denzel killing a bunch of people on Equalizer and saying he's a bad person. Like, that's art. It's a movie. That's you can't different. hold rappers, you can't hold rappers to that and say, oh, he's talking about this in his music. Like, Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. How? You, uh, maybe, Without maybe holding not De you, If Denzel walking here, you ain't be like, yo, that's fucked up what you did in no, Equalizer because 3. It's, because this is, it depends on who the audience is. If this was 30, 40 years ago, and we didn't know the repercussions and the effects that rap has, especially violent rap has on these young children's minds and how they look up to these celebrities and idolize these celebrities. If we did, were, if it was 40 years ago, 50 years ago, and we didn't know those ramifications, then we can say, okay, this is different because we didn't expect that. At this point, you know, I know, both of them know how these little kids look up to these drill rappers and how they idolize them and how it affects the way that they move throughout this world. So you can sit up here and say, oh, it's just an art form and use that as a cop out. If you're really good at your art, use a different type of art form. So yeah, but, but Demaris, what you're saying is that's killing, shooting, homicides, murders. That's something that has been happening. Hip hop is only 50 years old. Murders, killings, and all that shit has been happening way before hip hop even was thought of. Okay. So just because this but genre is here. But you say all here, the time that these younger boys are way worse than the, the, the generations before them. You say that on this oh, podcast all the time. Absolutely. Why do you think that that is? You don't think that that has anything to do with the inception of drill music and how violent music has gotten and how accessible I'm it has become to I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't. What I'm saying is I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, because an artist talks about this, like he's doing something wrong. Like that's adding poison to our community. I'm not going to say that. Now I do at the same time see the influence that music has. The music had an influence on me. I started experimenting with smoking weed and drinking 40s and shit like that just off of the shit I was listening to. That's how I was introduced to that shit. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about that. But at the same time, I still had my own. I wasn't a follower. You understand what I'm saying? So I think a lot of the times it's who is doing these things. These are kids that are lost. They're just looking for identity. They're trying to find themselves. They don't have a but those foundation. Are all, those are damn near all kids. Once you get are under the age of, I want to say like 16, that is damn near all kids. All kids are lost and looking Yeah, but for no, but identity. all kids, all kids are not without foundation. A lot of these kids like that are doing dumb shit come from great homes, great families. Like they're just following. So, I, but I'm not going to blame that solely on music. That would be unfair to the artist. Like, because I said something, you mean to tell me I caused four ho homicides in the city because I said something in a, in, a, in a song last week? That's unfair to put that on the artist. It's How? Well, all the time, not to interrupt you, but all the time you say on this podcast, I have to use my platform responsibly. I have to be careful what I say because I know that I have a reach. Mm -hmm. So if you're making millions and millions and millions of dollars off of these kids, no matter whether it's just you or whether it's a hundred rappers and it's like, oh, well, they're all talking about the same things too. You are participating in a culture and you are contributing and you got to eat that. It might not feel good and you might have to look and say, hey, I'm making millions. I'm feeding my family. I'm helping my family out the hood. But you are contributing to a problem. It's the same shit with recycling. I can sit up there and go throw a bottle on the ground and say, oh, but this, my one little bottle isn't going to cause real harm in the world, but I am still contributing to the problem. Yeah, but again, very true. But I'm, it's not fair to say because an artist is rapping about this type of music that, oh, you're the sole cause of this that's going on in our communities. I can never put that on just the artist. It's a it's a bigger problem. No, poverty it's a, it's is a problem. A, this yeah. is what I'm saying. It's a, it's, a, it's a way bigger problem than just the music and hip hop. Now, again, I'm with you. I've seen it firsthand. I've been a, a victim of it to a certain degree of how music can influence and, you know, affect your upbringing and you growing up in your environment. 100%. It's the energy that's put out. It's a fucking, it's words. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it gets you... People listen to music to get in a zone with the athletes in the locker room. Yeah. Not, not, well, not that to kill too. people. Niggas but. put on certain music to go kill people. They oh, no. Do. I mean, we've seen we've seen even Marines say they was listening to certain songs and shit when they were going in Afghanistan, going like looking for like Taliban and they was listening to certain music like to get them in that 
in that mood. So, but that's what it is. It's a, it puts you in a mood, but you have to understand how to separate that. Like the same, if you go to see a movie, if I see somebody shooting up a whole fucking store in a movie, I'm not going to be in a movie theater rocking back and forth. Like, yeah, as soon as I leave here, I'm going outside to fucking do this same shit that I just, like, no, this is, the, this is not, this is art. This is just creativity. This is how somebody's painting a story, painting a picture. I'm not going to go out here and do that because that's the words that I'm listening to. That's the, it's just a difference in being able to associate yourself with art and music and just say, okay, I want to be like that. I want to do that. That's a, that's the problem. Like a lot of these kids are just lost souls. Like they're lost on heavy drugs, fucked up family uh, situation, fucked up living situation, you know, poverty, like you said, no education. It's a bigger problem than just saying, oh, this drill rapper is the reason. Like, because a lot of these drill rappers are really just rapping about the shit that they're seeing. Not that they're not necessarily doing, but the, the shit that's going on in their environments, their homeboy just got killed. You know what I'm saying? Or their cousin was killed and things like that, growing up wherever. It, so it's not, I, you can't just put that on the artist. I think that's unfair. But there is a heavy influence on music and the culture and what goes on in our neighborhoods yeah. because it is the voice of the people from these communities. Yeah, and I'm not just being I'm not just being hard on and we could get off this because it's depressing and shit, but I'm not just being hard on hip hop too. I give video games the same amount of smoke for a lot of the shit. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna, we gonna probably much more. We're gonna cancel GTA like and be like, yo, like they were weren't they like uh trying to get GTA canceled? I can I, I can understand why. Yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like we gotta look past just the video game, past just the artist and the rapper, and we gotta look past that and, and dig deeper. Like what's what's the root? Of, of these problems. I agree. Maul, you know my schedule is nuts. Mm -hmm. Between this podcast, other stuff I'm doing, being a father, it's tough to eat healthy and eat quick. Yeah. Factor actually has delicious and ready to eat meals. So once I leave this podcast, I can just go right home and get like an actual nutritious meal. Just like the never frozen heat and eat type of thing. That exact one. Mm -hmm. And I put on some, some dad weight. They do have Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. More than 60 add-ons to keep you fueled up so I can continue to podcast and try to be a father. I had the peanut Buddha bowl before. Okay. Back there. Loved it. As a proud Irish American, I can co-sign their loaded mashed potatoes. They were incredible. What I also liked was it's flexible with your schedule. So if I you know, have my orders coming in, but we're gone for two weeks, super easy. Log on, tell them, hey, I'm not here. Mm. And they won't send you food, but they'll send it right when you get back. It's, listen, it's the factor. Head to factormeals.com slash Rory Mall 50 and use code Rory Mall 50 to get 50% off. That's code Rory Mall 50 at factormeals.com slash Rory Mall 50 to get 50% off. That was a good, healthy conversation, guys. It's always good to have healthy yeah. conversation. Love a nice little after school special. You know what I'm saying? Some jokes. Yeah. Yeah, funny. No, I really enjoyed the conversation. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was great. Um, but back to your point of saying, like the female rappers that can actually rap looking at Sexy Red. I do think there is a balance that we need to pay attention to. Flo Millie, who we've loved for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I love, you could say that the machine pushed the button, but she's been putting in work for, what, seven years now? Mm -hmm. I love that Cardi and SZA hopped on that remix. The song is incredible, and I think it's her time. Mm -hmm. She can really rap. She's one of those, so I think there is still a good balance. As much as I shit on current hip hop and what I think is more of a, a business model than it is a music model, you still get people like Flo Millie getting the looks they deserve to have SZA and Cardi on a remix. Shout out to Kellen, shout out to RCA. But like, that's... <laughs> great look for Flo Millie. I mean, anytime you can get a record with Cardi and SZA, I mean, that's, you know, that's the top of the top. Um... But is that another way for, like you said uh, earlier, Cardi is having trouble catching one. Mm -hmm. Is this another way for her to stay relevant? Yeah. Stay in the, in, in the air? 100%. For sure. SZA's on it. SZA doesn't have a problem with any relevancy. So why? No, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just speaking about Cardi in particular. Like, because artists will do that. Even though they're big. And SZA they're big also names. just put out an album. Even though they well that part that's still charting, but even though they're they're big, one part, it's right? like they'll yeah. they'll they'll hear because to me this is again great for Flo Millie because this is you talking about Cardi and fucking Scissor, two of the biggest fucking artists. Um, but this is to me another way of if 
an artist is signed to how we had the conversation of one of the biggest artists, right? And that artist goes in the studio just to hear what you're working on and hears like, oh shit, like you got a record. Mm -hmm. This is really just a cool way of saying, yo, let me get that. Like, let me hop on. I need a verse on that. But that's it's been happening in hip hop forever. Say, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I think it's a, back to our longevity conversation, I think it's a beautiful way for young artists and legacy acts to use each other. 100%. I'm not saying- Hove did it. Drake does it. I'm not, I'm not Everybody saying- Everybody does not, it. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying that that is essentially what this is. Mm. Here's this artist that's on the rise, on the come up, making some noise, caught a record, has a really dope record. Artists that are already established hear that record and like, nah, I need to, I need to eat on it. I need to, I need a verse on that. Mm. If if Flo Millie was signed to Cardi or SZA, we may not have even heard this record. It made it. That, that, I'm just saying that that's how you're saying it would have went to what it would have went to the bigger artists. It would have went to this would have just been a Cardi record if she was signed to Cardi. This if is, Cardi had a label or no, if she was signed to SZA. No, because Flo how, Millie is such a completely different artist than maybe... I'm actually, telling you, I that's how things being, happen. This I is not like a guess. That's I, how things I happen. I understand that, but it also has to match the artist. We were talking about literally on our last conversation about Drake and how he handles his artists. The artists on his label usually make music like him. This Flo Millie song... This is, could be a Cardi this record. This could not be a Cardi record. It could be a SZA record. This would not be no Cardi Of course record. this could be a SZA record because she's basically singing. This could be a Cardi record. This could absolutely be a Cardi record. Can you if find me a Cardi record that sounds anything like this? Cardi has songs where she's singing on some of the songs. Song with SZA. Pardon, what are we uh, talking about? Invasion, invasion of Privacy. It's not just about the singing. It's about the way that the song is. Like, this isn't a Cardi record. It just isn't. So why is Cardi on the record? It's a good feature. It's cute. It's a different... It's a remix. Like, it's not like it's just a regular song. It's a remix. So, yes, you switch the song up a little bit, but it does. It just doesn't sound like a Cardi record. I don't think that's a big, crazy thing to say. If Flo Millie... If Cardi B had a record label and Flo Millie was an artist that she signed, I can guarantee you that if Cardi walked in this session and heard that record, this would be a Cardi B record. Okay. Guarantee you that. I disagree. That's how it happens. Like it, it always happens. I like could that. see it as Cardi featuring Flo Millie. I think they would. However, you want to chop it, it would be on a Cardi B project, or or it would be released as a Cardi B record. Is what I'm saying. Well, I think it's great that Cardi is, I guess, I guess helping Flo Millie. But again, she's been working for so long. No, this in is her own lane. this is definitely Cardi and SZA helping. But this, Flo. I mean, this is an RCA move. I think RCA wanted to remix a record that's already popping and got SZA, who's on RCA. I'm sure she liked it and fucks with Flo Millie. I'm sure their relationship. Any and then got Cardi that, after that because Cardi is, to your point, hopping on things to be next to what's hot at the time, which I don't think there's any fault in that. That's part of the game. That's part of the game. That's what I'm saying. If, 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 this, if this was an artist signed to one of these ladies, this could easily have been one of their records. 100%. SZA, we, we know this would have been a SZA song. This sounds like a SZA not, record. Yeah, it does. You know what I'm saying? But Cardi, I could see Cardi taking this. And like you said, even if she kept flow on it, if that was her artist, this would be a Cardi song is what I'm saying. But even to that point, like, I'm sure an A&R heard that record at RCA. They didn't send it to SZA. Flo Millie kept it. They're on the same label. That is similar to what you're saying. Yeah, but I'm talking about being signed directly to that artist, not being label mates. Being signed directly to that artist, yeah, it's a, it's a that's a total different thing, mm. totally different thing. But one of my one of my candidates for a song of the summer, the Slow Millie record, I like it. Definitely one of my one of my candidates. Do you like the remix? I like the remix. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. I like the remix a lot. The video's dope. Like I, I like it. Um, and staying in music, it was a it was a cool new music Friday. I felt like. Um, we can stay in longevity and legacy. Mm -hmm. My my partner in crime, man in the woods. Did he come out of the woods? Yeah, we might have to. Justin Timberlake. We might have to forgive Justin for that uh, man in the woods album. And um, oh, this album was that good. Act like it never. I mean, it's a lot better than man in the woods. So we might have to forgive Justin. Might be he might be slowly working his way back into. Our good graces and a spot at the Thanksgiving dinner table for sure. <sighs> Should I have some white hate? White hate? I love white hate. So absolutely. I love when y'all hate on each other. The album confused me. It was a, a roller coaster of me 
liking it and me also thinking it was the worst thing ever. Really? The first record, Memphis, I was like, okay, this was like when Usher tried to make uh, that Future album. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? All right, Justin was in the woods. Now he's just trying to find records that should have went to Drake. Mm -hmm. I was very nervous. I hate the intro. Okay. It would be a great song for someone else. Justin trying to match what's going on right now was awful. Okay. It's always a little weird when the legacy artists try to catch the current sound. And maybe that's short-sighted and... My opinion, maybe they should try to do that for longevity, but I think it sucks. Yeah. Um, th it started out slow. Technicolor, I think, could be ranked in Justin's top 15 catalog. That's how good Already? Technicolor, it, that record is insane. Drown was like, they were trying to recreate the old Justin. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of this album feels like. The Justin that we loved with Timberland they tried, they to, re they tried to recreate. They gave us glimpses of it. They tried to recreate it's like since they brought him out the woods. It's like seeing Stockton and Malone pick and roll. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's still, it's not as quick as it used to be, but it, okay. And some landed, some landed really good and some didn't at all. There was like, there's really no gray area on this album. It's either they nailed it or they, did. or they didn't at all. Like okay. the Usher album, there's stuff that like, I'm like, ah, oh, that's cool. That's really great. Not for me. Yeah. This one is either... Nailed it. I hate that. Or big get the fuck out of here. Is it big? Is that the name? I hate that record. Really? Oh my God. I hate that record. I wish I never heard that record. You hate it that much? He said, when I used to go to McDonald's, I would never order the small. I would always do it big. What is that? <laughs> I don't ever want to hear a pen game crazy. Him. All right, Damaris. Well, go back to what you were saying, uh, Rory. I mean, one of the best records on there, I think the writing is fucking. Insane. I'm. We don't need to leave. I'm the party. I don't know why. Girl, I'm I the love party. That song. It's a good song. That record is that dope. Hook, I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. Sucks. Y'all crazy. That song. That's a dope record. Man. I don't ever want to hear a 46 year old tell a girl to stay in because I am the party. That sounds like something Will Ferrell would say when he walked into like a stepbrother scene. First of all, Usher's not. <laughs> like, that's what that sounds like. First of all, Usher's not 46. Number one. 47. No, he's. Not. What is wrong with you? 45. He um, close. That's all right. That's crazy. He said 46. You tried to come on. That's not it's not a year off. I was a year off. Us is 45? Yeah. He's, yeah. I thought he was like 43, 44. Uh, he's the party. Oh shit. I didn't know Usher was 45. He looks good for his age. He looks, he, he looks oh, incredible. Yeah. incredible for his age. Are you <laughs> yes. kidding me? I'd, I'd be. Um too far. You guys say I'm gay. Whoa. Yeah, that was no, like the like <laughs> the, way the beats on the album, <laughs> the beats on the album were really good. Okay. Okay. All right. Like, I'd like to play a beat. For no, but you like to get, yeah. Oh my God. You would never be a fly I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Session. Yes, I would. We, I'd be so scared. Let's get back to it. Especially a, if how amazing. Fly on the wall. I'd be a man on his knees. I'd be Kiki Palmer. We almost made it through this episode without y'all without being ags. Like, y'all keep telling y'all it's 20. I'm being ags. progressive. <laughs> y'all can <said> ags. <laughs> I like that. Like, Uggs. Yeah. Um, That's pretty good. I don't want to sit here and shit on everything I thought it was. I think it is great, but title? like when you get stuff like this, dude, like I don't need, the world does not need Justin Timberlake's Afrobeat record. Nah, oh, black no, women no, love no, when, when Timberlake get into like that Russell bag. Brand's uh, African child. What <laughs> <is it>, uh, <laughs> Classic record, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he was a African space Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's a great record. <laughs> Yo, that movie is really underrated. And I know we're, we're not Team Puff, but he killed that role. Get him as to the well. Greek. Get him to the Greek hilarious. Um, yeah, there's just moments in there that I just think RCA was like, well, he's back. Let's get him on some, let's get him on some Afro beats. They should just put him in blackface. The record with NSYNC is fucking incredible. Paradise is so good. I love that that's like the way NSYNC came back. What? You should have put him in blackface. What is he? I, I don't listen. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you caught the Lauren Hill. Yeah. I don't listen. All right. I'm, I'm, I got I to gotta pick that up from you. I All didn't right. even hear him say that. All right. There you go. All right. Cool. No, they, I mean, once he went in the woods, it was like invisible blackface. Got you. Um, it's cool. The album? It's just cool. Is it better than a man in the woods? I don't know. Nah, it's better than a man in the woods. Don't do that. This is man a, in the woods. All right. At least they committed. This is a better album. I'll put it this way. I don't like man in the woods. Okay. At least they committed. Okay. They committed in Man in the Woods. They went full-fledged and that's what the fuck we're going to do. This one felt like we're committing to 
trying to make Justin what he was before when he was a pop star that the whites and blacks loved. Mm -hmm. And I think they missed more than they hit. But when they hit, hands down, some of the best music. Yeah, even in the video. Technicolor is yeah. so fucking good. That's a great record. It looks like they're reminding Justin Timberlake he's Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Like even this, even watching this video currently without sound. How old is like, Justin? It's like he's acting to be himself. Probably, oh. probably 46 too. Yeah, you're around the same age as I should. Yeah, I would say they're Justin, you know what it is with Justin, man? He's he's always like <laughs> he's always trying to it's 43. It's 43. Okay. Oh wow. You recently he, turned 43. He's he's always like the cool spy in all of his videos. <laughs> it's yeah. like they try to make him the cool spy. Like it's like, right, who is this? Who is this handsome guy walking like in a different tempo than everybody else in the room? And it's always funny that the cameras specifically on him, but no one recognizes him. He no. always walks through the, the club undetected. Yeah. And then has a has even a, though spotlight is on him. Yeah, then has a one-on-one -on -one with a a beautiful woman on the dance floor and then disappears in his Lamborghini. And I don't care who you are, like a James Bond movie. It's like Batman. Even if you're not famous, if this scenario happened in the club, everyone's going to stop and look at what they're doing. <laughs> Have you ever been in a club and seen a scenario like this happen where you ever see like a guy that doesn't know a girl, he just walks up to her and starts dancing? That never happens. And it they, happens. Oh, when? that was freaky. I've been that, I've been that girl. Is this you, Damaris? Wait, look at it. I've the, been that girl. When have you been that girl, Damaris? I've been that girl. When have you, you gotta been? Go, you got a different. You got to go to different type of clubs. Well, you got to go to the clubs when they actually. I got to go to a different type yeah. of club. You got to go to clubs, dance clubs, like where they actually dance. Yeah. They don't dance in clubs no yes, more. Yes, they do. They have plenty where? of dance clubs. Where? Na is, name one in New York. Well, I don't. I'm older now. I don't really go to clubs. I'm older. You're dance. 29. I'm. This You're is 29. What I was doing when I was 20, years. 21 years old. Licking faces in the club. He was licking somebody's mouth. Oh, a random dude. That. She was tripping. She was That's tripping. That's swag. I didn't see all that. I love that. But the dancing with the random, like, oh, that, the dancing with the random white like guys Reposado. sweating and all that shit. Like, yeah, that people really, that's, that actually happens. We don't do, do that in, in African American hip hop culture clubs. No. But with the white African American <laughs> culture clubs. What club that is that? Sounds like Russell Brand yeah. said that. <laughs> what club is African American culture club? Yeah, I never want African American hip hop. Yeah, night. like what the <laughs> fuck is that? That sounds like a fucking AA meeting, like the African American culture club of, of Society like of America. A, a I think that's the definition college. of urban. Yeah, like what the fuck is that? Yeah, they don't they, they don't do that at urban clubs. Urban. Well, they definitely why. Right, so if they not doing that at urban clubs, what club are they doing that at? They do that at the white club. The white club people be in there together, dancing with each other, kissing each other randomly on a dance floor. That happens. That's because everybody's high on coke. So don't as, as, what as a white, even though we're offbeat, we do enjoy dancing together. We do I mean, a lot. We do I mean, a lot of dancing. I mean, black people, we enjoy dancing together too. What the, I mean, you guys are great at it. I'm saying we're trash, but we still like it. I didn't think I needed to explain that black people dance. I was trying to explain that white people dance. <laughs> Y'all don't even know Justin called mono right there with that girl licking it. See, that's 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 how you catch that mono that you had. Why are you pointing at me? That mono. <laughs> hey, mono when I was 17. How did you catch it? Girl licked your mouth on the dance floor, right? Probably, Probably something similar. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, probably. Exactly my point. I it had was bronchitis a, a, too. An underrated that shit sucked. feeling as as a youngster when you were at, at the parties or the clubs. When she dances with you for two and a half songs, and then mm. she turns around and keeps dancing with you. You've been chosen for the night. Oh, once you get that face-to-face -face time? Like, if she dances two songs, you're like, all right, this could be something. That third song, when she turns around to dance with you face-to-face, -face, you've been, like, you're getting pussy. You get the little OTPH. Yeah, but then you You start, know that, that feeling of like, oh shit, I'm gonna get pussy tonight. But then you start hating when she start dancing with somebody else. And then you standing there trying to look cool and not dance by yourself. But now you don't want to dance. face to face with you, she's not dancing to somebody else. Nah, there was a lot what? of girls that used to she, face maybe. to face you every guy in the party. Yeah, like that nah, don't mean that those. she's with you for the night because she face to face. Then she gives you like that over the pants tug like in the middle of the club. The bad thing was the guys that didn't understand that that was just a dub and like awkwardly followed the girl for the rest oh of the party. God. Just because y'all danced for that long, she was really just dancing. That's it. But that's what I'm saying. Some guys, they see her dance with another guy and then now they're like mad. Like, you thought that was like just your dance partner for the night? <laughs> she's in a party. Like, she's... But I'm, I'm saying, you know that feeling on the third song turnaround and she looks at you and like, you're trouble. I'm getting pussy. Not your trouble. You've been outside a little bit too long. Your trouble. Your trouble. If your trouble nigga, just means she feel you getting hard on her butt. That's all yeah. that means. And if a nigga, if a nigga tell you... No, I'm hard. I'm married. horny. I'm not trouble. If a nigga tell you he's trouble, you're trouble, he's married. I haven't been hard know. on a butt in a minute, man. I miss those days. 
Cause you haven't probably danced, and that's probably. what I'm saying. I miss like the dancing days. No one dances like that. Now, when we was at the box, you was trying to find one to dance with. There was none in there. It was, yeah, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, you no, had I to tried. see Julian. Look, anytime a girl walked past, he started no, trying to catch looking. the beat a little bit. I'm like, yo, trying Julian, catch the beat. It's not in here tonight. Lauren was like, next to me, licking toes on a fucking perch. Yeah, Lauren was going crazy. Why are you telling Lauren our business? Ben told this story. Fing- Lauren, I don't give a fuck. Fingering yeah. a girl while dancing at a high school party was like the purest form of human I think I ever was. That's when I think I was my happiest. <laughs> you went home Why? and slept with your finger in your mouth? That's sick. You did I de- that before. I definitely yeah, smelled it. You, you, you can't make that up. definitely smelled it and tasted it. Yeah, you can't, your imagination you can't that make that up. You can't yeah, just dude. create that off the freestyle. It's a petri like, dish. You just, a petri dish. Listen, man. That, that feeling of when she, you know, your hand was close and she gave you that little nudge to push it down. You felt that lip, that I warm don't, lip. Clammy. It just gets warm. You feel I don't think there's a better feeling. Yeah, that warm lip hanging outside of the thong. Woo. A warm lip still hits. Yeah. We got to bring back dancing. We got to bring back warm we lips. We got to bring back fingering in club. <laughs> <Warm lips. laughs> we got to bring back warm lips. Lips don't be warm no more. That's the problem. Mm. See, everybody walking around with these cold coochies. <laughs> Aren't they? See what I'm saying? Y'all niggas out here, y'all not getting these coochies warm. Like, it's a lot of cold coochies in the club right when now. When was the last time you ran into a cold one? A cold coochie? Yeah. Shit about like it felt like you reached at the bottom of the cooler for the yeah. Beer. It's like yo, like yo, what's you? I right, you got to your women took the, like those hand warmer things that you like slap to activate and just put them in there. I had a conversation I, with a man who complained do. one time about warm coochie. He said he liked for the like the the snail mucin that comes out to be. Oh, no, that's what she's ovulating. You like a necrophiliac? You want to fuck he a like, like no, he like I don't know. He said it was like a he liked it almost like when somebody no, tell like, that nigga to go buy like, aloe plant, put it in the fridge then. Facts. Facts. That's what he want. He want a cold piece of aloe plant. plant. Yeah, he want a cold piece of <laughs> aloe. That's what he want. <laughs> not a, not a he don't want a woman. That nigga want a cold <laughs> he aloe. Want a woman. Yeah, he don't want a woman. He want a cold piece of aloe. Yeah, That's what he, he said, want. He said it's a nice feeling every once in a while. Like, not regularly, but the coldness. Cold like pussy's a nice crazy. Feeling. That means something's wrong. Like, it's, like, it's supposed to be one of the warmest parts well, of your body. The, once the... <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's literally coming out of your body. No, well, People have become it, such whores. Foreplay is done. People are just fucking... That's why. that's why it's cold. Now four. No one's warming the pussy. Yeah, that's what's, that's, yeah. Y'all gotta yeah, warm y'all these. Ain't. Y'all gotta warm these coochies up. Get back to foreplay for like forty minutes. Foreplay like, tight. Is fingering even a thing to this generation? Hell, fingering. Nah. Hell. I mean, I'm good with fingering. Like, leave it, taking a backseat. Why? Mm, it's just it's what? not it's unsanitary. No matter how much you wash your hands, it's just your hands carry a lot of bacteria. It's unsanitary. Your hands carry bacteria. That but, pussy. But if I put my tongue there. You think a nigga mouth and a dick don't carry bacteria? <laughs> yeah, carry more than that. Your hands, <laughs> like, your hands are probably the dirtiest part of your body. So. I'm not in hell, no. Nah. Your dick dirtier than your hands? My, don't play with me like. Well, that. you said hell no, so I'm, I'm talking about in dirt. general. Like oh, niggas ain't okay. no dirt star, some dirty probably. niggas out. You you know it's some dirt balls walking around. Why the fuck you telling me? I know it's like I fuck with dirty niggas. I'm not saying you fuck with them, but you see them. They exist for sure. Oh, they do they? <laughs> <laughs> them, them niggas is everywhere. A dirt bomb, and those <laughs> are the dirt and a dirty nigga is the most social nigga. He want to be in mm, every girl face. Like nigga, you don't, don't see that plaque in your mouth? Like nigga, get out of her face. And if you, you think about it, if I wash my hands, what's worse, that or me busting down a chopped cheese in Hennessy and then go to eat your pussy at two a.m. That's your my, thing. My mouth is probably disgusting. That post club mouth when you probably just well, eh, alcohol is a disinfectant. You might have had like yeah, but Henny I think has meal. more. Yeah, like it doesn't ba- yeah. disinfect it. <laughs> it can't disinfect itself. You can pussy off the satay. You can brush your teeth. Yeah, you your pussy ate by niggas that drink Hen- regular Hennessy is crazy. Oh, out they the out here. At this old age. They out here. Regular, just Hennessy in general. No, they, have, they have really high like price points for well, other yeah. Hennessy's that are really good quality, but regular Hennessy, no. I've, been I've, I've ate a chick's pussy after sipping E and J. And you telling me me washing my hands and fingering Was you it would be peach? worse? Nah, straight evil Jesus. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking Paul Masson Peach. I'm sorry, but who? That's nasty. Paul Masson niggas, niggas be drinking Paul Masson. Jesus is disciples. Paul yeah, so like that. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the Jesus is disciples? Paul Masson. <laughs> who the fuck is disciples. Paul Masson? It was at the end of the last summer. <laughs> Paul Masson. It's a brandy. Yeah, you've yeah. never had Paul Masson. Never, never Paul heard Masson? of Paul Masson. Oh. 
Oh, I no, remember that's, I had an uncle. Oh, oh, that's that real, that's that real alky shit. Like, yeah. only a real alky would drink that. I used to that. drink that shit. My uncle and my aunt used to drink it. And one day they spilled it. I remember, I'll never forget this as a kid. They spilled it on her wooden floor and it took the color out the wood. They never drank it again. <laughs> yeah, just it that's, ate. That's it, really that what Kay Michelle was, that was shit thinking about. the wood it floor. through the wood. <laughs> They were like, oh, no. Nah, That's the VSOP K. Michelle was was really singing about. Paul Masson. Nah. My, my track coach uh, at St. Peter's name was Coach Masson. So we used to, when we were drinking that in college, we used to say we was drinking drinking the Coach Masson. That's sick. We drank that I a lot in college. It was cheap. Yeah. It's it's nasty. It's my, dangerous. My cheap alcohol was 99 bananas. I can't even smell that shit. <laughs> I just got I, nauseous. Yeah. Like, I will throw up it. smelling that shit. You know what I've been drinking a lot lately? I had one uh, last night. I've been drinking a lot of Mezcal Negronis lately. Oh. Mezcal Negronis? I can, I can tell by your hat that you Olympics. do. It's just you look like, like a Mezcal Negroni. How's that pretentious? It's not. It's mezcal Negroni? Cocktail. Yeah. Just the word Negroni feels pretentious. I feel like you shouldn't say Negroni. Yeah, that's a little. I'm I said, I I said it's like nigger and macaroni. Oh, I don't like it. Well, he yeah. said he did say I said macaroni. He said but Magroni. a thing about a mezcal negroni, Roy, it does it, it is your color, so at okay. least you can like coordinate. Oh, it's a little ginger red. Yeah, little uh, plus the Campari. He could just do an old fashioned. Old fashioned tastes better. And... Oh, I love a mezcal. Negroni. They're great. It's super simple too to make. If mm-hmm. anyone out there is experimenting with cocktails, catch <laughs> catch gave me a free espresso martini shot. <laughs> And yeah, why do y'all drink that shit? Well, it's not a shot. Well, they gave it. <laughs> it's a start there. Like, it's yeah. not, well, they bust not. it. They bust it down. Like it's basically an espresso martini, and they bust it down in the shots for my table. And I was just like, oh, this is. Oh, so he just gave you an espresso martini, but he only wanted to give you one. Yeah. So and he. So he, he it, it was free. It. it was like free, but it was just it's nasty. Uh-huh. You know when Damaris was a bartender, she used to charge me full price. Sure did. Yeah, but that was kind of like an even exchange because you would charge her full price for to go Palooza. to New Palooza. Mind so. you, that's eighty dollars. His fucking drink was ten. Mm. I mean, I, there was only so many comps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I got him. <laughs> my guest list is jammed. <laughs> like, it was jammed. It's, it's, yeah. jam, it's slammed. My my list is slammed. I can't can't do and that. And especially if you try to get Rory, be like, just buy the ticket and then I get you backstage. You go to like get backstage. He's run. He's <laughs> fake runner. I'm just so busy. Fake like, running around. Right I was not you. fake running around. I was really running around. No, no. I've seen Rory really running around Barclay Center. I was like, oh no. He's oh, working. that night. He's I working. Was, oh, that night. You were there. I was working. Oh, I did the pyro. Coked out of my mind. <laughs> This is who y'all let control the pyro. I, had, I didn't know he did coke. <laughs> <laughs> this is who did. y'all let. This at is that, when would I have known you? You would done coke. This is at before that, uh, that whole tour. I didn't see one person do cocaine on the Palooza tour. We were doing a, you know, and most of the time you're sharing bags, so we're doing a lot of bag passes, and we were doing them in the tunnels, like at the Barclays backstage. But there's always just like police posted up because it was one of those nights, and we were doing a pass. This guy, man, in front, like. In the wall of police are three feet in front of us, not even. And he just takes the bag out and does like the most botched, horrible backwards handoff in front of the police wall. And I just go and just like grab it. We just like walk by. I was like, dude, what the fuck was that? We were both like strung out. It was just, there was a lot of strung out. In his his defense, I'm sure the cops were preoccupied with the 60 crips that were backstage. Uh, Yeah, but like, (laughs) if just like, you know, because that's like the fluorescent highlight, the wall, that, that, see that hallway is just so well lit they would have seen the bag if the bag hit the floor they wouldn't have cared it was just a i mean i would have felt awful uh but after that i got a text about doing the pyro and i ended up doing the pyro for the the locks reunion and just like smashing buttons and hitting on the sliders so you almost killed styles and, and i was doing i was doing jada and, uh, and chic i was doing bumps while we were doing the it was great while they was doing money power respect you was doing money powder yeah. yeah. <laughs> Money, powder, respect. Name it you know, while, while they were saying they had enough weight <laughs> to use the scale that the way the whales win, yeah. Julian was like, yeah, <laughs> thanks. On tour, when thanks. we would do, like, when we would do draw, like, when we do bumps, whatever, outside, like, in the in the production pit, like, in the tech room, Dude. all the tech guys. <laughs> no, yeah, this is just... This is seriously, like, when mothers find out, like, their kids drank at 16. I swear on... My whole life, I had no idea y'all were doing coke. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? It's a great, it's an easy drug. I would have told y'all not to do cocaine. Why? Like, hey, especially because the locks. I don't think our insurance the, covered that. Because the locks is coming on stage and you don't need to be in charge of fucking blowing up Jada Kiss's face. I did a pyro great machine. job. No one got near the pyro. That was. That was me. No, they did a great job. No, yeah. that was me. I guided them. You, d- you guided them? You said, yo, don't step you there. Said, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, go, go that way. <laughs> <laughs> 
But <laughs> if, you ever, if you ever get into the tech like b- a booth, like with the light guys, with the sound guys, they all do. Co- so we would spend me and redacted name from earlier would just spend like time in there, just like openly just doing bumps with the team, the mm-hmm. venue team. Yeah. Okay. So you know it's camaraderie. You were running a fucking a uh, crazy I organization. No, I, I had no. Rory idea. was just running around slapping wristbands on people's wrists. Yeah. All his for taking them off. Maul actually did. Uh, Maul was a good help at the Barclays Center. Was I? You I made you made Maul. a decision that was really actually helpful in the moment. Oh yes. Um, I was in the middle of losing my fucking mind. That was what it was. I Benner. I told Benner. Right. Yeah, it was Benner. I told Benner. I think they were trying to stop all of Fabio's, like his whole crew, from yeah. going on stage. And I'm like, dog, we're in Brooklyn, Barclays Center. He has one of the biggest records. In the fucking city, in the fucking country right now. Let all of these motherfuckers on stage. Like, why are y'all trying to stop the whole block from going on? This is a moment. Some of them started climbing and sneaking in. They were trying to stop them. I'm like, dog, just let them go. As soon as they got on stage, that shit turned into a fucking moment. It was the perfect advice. Like you can't stop that from happening. Because no matter what, you're not going to stop it. Yeah. So you might as let well let the moment happen. They just want to go in there. They, they, they were great. Bro- yeah. Like, this, they, they grew up 10 blocks from here. This is like them being in the garden. Yeah. Let them have their moment. Let them go up there, do their dances. You know, like just let them fucking go crazy. That and stage it, was packed. I, I, I was crazy when I came on. I will speak for Fabio and his crew for, for that night specifically. They were some of the best, I don't want to use the word entourage, but best crew that we've had. Mm-hmm. Usually the crews are, are always a nightmare. They were some of the, the nicest, most polite people ever. Once Fabio was done, they got off stage and went and party. Like yeah. they were fucking great. The cops were on crazy alert. I understand they had just had mm-hmm. a lot of shit had happened. Mm-hmm. Six nine, yeah. Casanova, mm-hmm. Rowdy. Like, there was a lot of shit that was going on with the Barclays. Yeah. So they were on edge with those guys. Those guys were amazing. Yeah, it was not. It was it was a moment. It was definitely a moment, and I'm I'm glad that they let them have that moment because that shit turned up a whole the show. The whole show was that night was dope. I would have Fabio hit the stage and night. did that record. That, that took that shit to a whole nother level. Raven took a picture of me when I was dancing to it. There's a picture of me. Oh, I know you like, were somewhere out there shaking No, I ass. literally was doing the big drip dance. Like, just like, <laughs> they got a video of me. Yeah. Great moment. Great time. Um, before we get away from music, I do want to note that Tierra Wack put out an incredible album on Friday. Hip hop. It's hip hop. It's R&B. It's pop. There's everything on that album. I've, I'm only like two or three listens into it, but you know when you can tell that you're going to like an album for mm-hmm. quite some time? Yeah. This was one of those. Tierra is, um, she, she's, she's like quietly one of my favorite artists. She, she delivered on this. Yeah. It, it's incredible. I'm, I'm really happy that she took her time with it. I'm happy that she's getting the shine she deserves for it. You know, as we know for the past however many years, Tierra's always been, I think, ahead of the curve as far as creative goes. With mm-hmm. everything that she does, but I can't recommend this album more. It's so fucking good. I'm, she, I'm, I'm she happy went for Tierra, man. She's she's dope. Like I think that she's just such a unique artist. Um, again, hip hop, MC, rapper. Um, she's dope, man. She's dope. She gives me a lot of like the old Missy vibes. Um, you know, just compare women to other women. It's cool. No, but I'm just Stop saying, like, as far as like shit. just her artist, like Fuck she <laughs> she pays attention. She's like, she's creating yeah. her own, like her Tierra world. And she's she's one of the artists that could actually really rap and oh, no, singing can, well. Tierra can rap. And it's like a lot not, of, it's a lot of great singing on this project. Really? Mm-hmm. It's it's great. Um, but before we get to voicemails, I know we we weren't really gonna get into it, but I do want to bring up more Kanye West text messages. Okay. The copy one that we talked about last episode was one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. I fully identified with his text message to Kai, even though I disagreed with him being mad at Kai. Mm -hmm. So you ain't do nothing wrong. So I felt this way for no reason. Ooh, sound like something you got off before. He said yes. And then he said, fuck you. Kanye said, fuck you? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yo. Poor Kai. That's how you know he's doing well. He getting hate from everywhere. Texting texting Kanye got to be like opening fortune cookies. Yes. You can't predict what he's going to say next. At all. There's no fucking way. And it's probably going to be bad advice to you. <laughs> you, you, can't, you cannot predict what Kanye is going to say next to you in a text message. He bro. might give you some lucky numbers. 
Uh, I wouldn't, but I would. He might <laughs> send you a picture. 450. He might send you a picture of a fortune from a fortune cookie. <laughs> like, imagine if somebody you was texting somebody and their responses was only like pictures of fortunes from fortune cookies. That'd be fire. I think it was like, you'd be like, yo, so what you doing tonight? And a nigga send you a message like, yo, your lucky numbers are. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> like, that's what texting Kanye has to be like. I just love the simplicity of, so you ain't doing nothing wrong. So I felt this way for no reason. Because you know the answer is rhetorical. Right. I feel a way. Mm -hmm. I, what a beautiful way to, to just put something. And then, Especially when you're wrong. Followed by the fuck you then. <laughs> uh, it's for those that aren't aware of what happened, uh, Kanye sent Kai a pair of his new sweatpants and apparently they're four sizes too large. So Kai said this on a stream. Nigga! <laughs> Yo. 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 The yo is crazy. <laughs> funny. Because you know he probably was waiting on those. And then you get them in an A that big, you like, oh, come on, man. Have you ever been in that position where you get seated something you couldn't wait for? Yes. And then they send you the wrong size? It's like, absolutely. Man, I've what the fuck? The, fuck? The, the initial message Kanye sent out was, don't make no jokes about my clothes when you ain't saying nothing about what Adidas is doing. When Vulture's song came out, you ain't playing my verse. You controlled. Don't play with me. <laughs> That's fortune cookie shit. Uh, that was at 10, <laughs> 16 p.m. <laughs> Imagine opening your DMs and seeing a message like that from Kanye. <laughs> Don't play with me. You controlled. You controlled. <laughs> what? Like, what are you talking about, man? And do you watch Kai's content? What did you think he was going to say during your Adidas back and forth? No, fuck that. <laughs> the funny part is Kai didn't say nothing wrong. Like, look, <laughs> how, big, the wrong look how big these pants are. Like, yo, what am I? Come on, man. Like, these just don't fit me. That ain't like, what's wrong with that? Man, I, I think it was great promo for the line. 100%. 100%. Yeah, that was, that made me want to go look at what the sweats look like. Do we think that, do we think that, uh, Ye makes an appearance in Kai's basement. That'd be so oh awesome. God. Kai would probably like bring it, bring in the right size sweats. <laughs> I think so. I could see that. Yo, seeing Ye yell at Kai while Kai just sit up there like, bro, like <laughs> it would be fucking hilarious. Like I could see Ye definitely going and kicking it with Kai on the stream for sure. I feel like he'd ask Kai to go to wherever he was, like whatever pyramid. Kanye was in. Nah, day. see, no, man. That's just something. Yeah, yeah you got to go. If oh, I gonna, agree with you. Yeah, like, he, he should, gotta he should go, go to yeah, the basement. Yeah, man. Go to, go to Kai's basement, man, and, and kick it with him there, man. Don't don't send Kai to come to some fucking empty warehouse. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah, it's an empty warehouse. Nothing in there. Just him and Kai. Like, no, man. <laughs> don't do that, man. No. I tried to look up this John Monopoly threat. Because apparently John Monopoly was Kanye West's manager currently and has been his manager for a long time. I saw the headline that he threatened Kai to like fight him. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find that clip of John Monopoly saying that. Is that actually true? But there's a Kai did respond. I know. I just couldn't find the original clip. I stuff would like, bro. <laughs> bro, how is you threatening me, nigga? Kai is really good at what he does, man. So good. <laughs> He's so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Making suspense for a Google search is a talent. Where he scores his. He's like, that's a it. pure talent. Which is age. <laughs> How old is this nigga? <laughs> How old is this nigga? <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Yo, how old is this nigga? It's funny. Can, can you read whatever is below? Because I have to hear the threat. How did John Monopoly say he was going to fight Kai? I just don't believe that. He said, uh, the, he posted a photo with Ye. He said, we good, but if we ever need to link up for a face-to-face, -face, I'll meet him in his hood on uh, the streets. Just me plus one. He can bring his whole team. Just so y'all understand the type of time I'm on. May Allah bless you all. That's so Wait, weird. what? That's so weird. Why do you bring Allah into that? During Ramadan, he sent he that was his message to Kai. No, that was a tweet. But why? Uh, but wait, what, a, a child for for pants. Yeah, just send him a better size, or don't send him at all. No, bring the the correct size to his fucking to his basement. Give it to him on his stream. 
Make it a moment, man. Yeah, I, I can speak. I can talk. So, uh, you know, I know that you guys, you know, you guys are going to be bumping heads. You know, I wanted to reach out and see if there's a way that we could find a peaceful resolution. Let's get on the same page. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm basically just. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, listen. I'm not Because as a people, I believe. What did Bob McClatt this one up? Strong together. <laughs> I think I think if we respect one another and take the time to communicate from a mature perspective, we can Bro, this is all they're arguing over a pair of sweatpants. We're not aligned. That's when things can go left. And I want to keep things centered. And I appreciate you for taking the time and considering these words. All right. Um I understand that, right? But we got my, you said what? I understand what? that. I understand that. But you have to understand why the man have come so crazy to me from the first place. They said the pants don't fit. The pants don't fit. <laughs> you said what? You said what? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, my arm. Um, you feel me? I could, I could. Whatever he want to do, we can resolve it. I don't care. What is there to um, resolve? To the fact that, like, I, I was, I had no disrespect. You feel me? And I just feel like, um, what? He was going back and forth on was a little was a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 um you go um how can I how how can we go about moving forward with this? <laughs> um, I think we just need to develop a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to get some correct sizes. Just send him the right pair. <laughs> Why are they on the phone it's, right it now? It sounds like John Monopoly is a gun to his head, like oh, okay. on some hostage shit. Two forty first. That's down the block from my block. Oh, John so, used so to you live on 241st. Oh. No bullshit. You said what? So you should know that we shouldn't go for no bullshit, no disrespect. Yeah. Oh, so John, he's from 241st. Oh, okay. John Monopoly is from Chicago. He, he, he must have lived over. He must. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he goes on to say he's lived there for 10 years or whatever. Oh, so he, yeah, so did he know the neighborhood then. <laughs> but why, like, why? That shit lame. Is this like... It's weird. <laughs> is this planned? There's no way that's weird. fucking real. That's what I'm telling you. This has to be a rollout. Ye is going on his stream. Has to be. There's no way all of this is over. Just him saying like, yo, like these shits don't fit. Like that's that's all he said. Was I think pit. that moment could have been sincere, but their reaction, Kanye's reaction is just a very Kanye reaction. Yeah. It's just like, but I think because of how he reacted, yeah, go to the house. It could lead to a stream. It should. Why wouldn't Kanye do that? Yeah, I think I think it'd be dope. I think it'd be dope. Kai's great at what he does, man. He's fucking. I, I want a, I want a son like him. He's so perfect. You want a son like Kai? Yeah, he's so funny and cute. Like I, he's he's a he's been streaming for years. I want like a son that's like inter, that's funny and like entertaining like that. Kai will try to bust your ass if he saw you in the club somewhere. You talking about you want a son like him? You like Kai beat? Well, after those Snapchats, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Who, who knows is funny? <laughs> I don't want to put anything on his jacket. Who knows? Who knows? Do we have voicemails? <laughs> You've got mail. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is actually a fun one. Remember the threesome story that we wanted? Yes. Oh, God. So, uh, since, yeah. It's, well, give, uh, give some quick backstory. She called in, was talking about she was living her life finally. She had her first threesome. Well, and then didn't she get on to some crazy question and we were way more concerned? Well, she was saying, I'm turning, she said, when I turned 30, I had all these things in my life. What did you guys, she was specifically asking Damaris, but then the question opened up to all of us. What did you want to do or accomplish at a certain point or time yeah. in your life? One of hers being a threesome, which she said she easily knocked off her list. And seven consonants. She said she wanted to do seven consonants. She made it to five. Yeah. And instead of caring about her amazing question and her quest, we were more concerned of how that first you, threesome went. You, you, it was literally you were more run concerned. the tape. No, we were, a, we're, a, we're a crew, we're a team. Okay. We're not gang gang. No, it's not until it's time to like, you know. We're already saying the white man speaks for all of us. Hmm, that's American. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's American. <laughs> Can we get rid of that flag, by the way, nah? Maul put that there. This is the country you live in, right? You're American. I am. All right then, the flag stays. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of America, I did just watch that Flowers of the Moonshine Killers of the Flower Moon. Flowers of the Moonshine. It's not the name of the movie, Rory. Killers of the Flower Moon. What? Say it. Say some racist. Worst acting Leo's ever done in his entire life. 
He's supposed to be bad. I understand he's supposed to be like the stupid guy that gets taken advantage of, but it was the most diet Shutter Island acting ever. It felt like outtakes from Shutter Island when he would like make the face in the same suit. Yeah, I, it was it was awful fucking. It was the worst De Niro's ever acted too. Well, De Niro's like he was a better actor in Meet the Parents than he was in that. <laughs> that was, I I appreciate the attempt of what they tried to do in Scorsese doing something like that. It was a good story, but. Man, did the two legends not deliver. Yeah, what's your name? Leo stunk in that movie. He was like bad, bad. Rory, you tend to over-exaggerate and be a hater, though. So is it really I, that I bad? love Leo's one of my favorite actors. It's not that bad. It's not that bad of a movie. It's really not that bad. <laughs> it's a good movie, actually. Oh, no, I'm going to rewatch it because it was three hours long and there was a lot of shit to, mm -hmm. to cover. It's a good movie. Just Leo was off. I mean, I don't the whole I, thing. I'm, I'm he with got him. I don't, outacted by everybody. I don't feel like it was some of Leo's best acting, but I don't think it was bad acting. Like, no. I think there's better growing pains scenes with Leo than there were in that movie. Uh, he going crazy now. See, nah, he, go ahead, Roy. He, you know he, <laughs> he going crazy. All he the time. Crazy. Yeah. He going crazy. Yeah. He Leo going wasn't crazy. good in growing pains? Yeah. But I, I think Leo's Come been, on, been good song. in everything he's done. He's one of my favorite actors by far. This was just awful. Okay. I mean, that's fair. I mean, you ain't got to be your favorite, but I, you enjoyed the movie, though. The yeah. story, the way it was shot. It's just tough to do three and a half hours when De Niro and Leo stink. Mm. Okay. I'm not mad at that. Everybody else carried it. Well, she... And, and Leo just the whole time... What is like, the lead actress's name? I forgot her name, but I think she just won. Didn't she win a... um? Was it a Emmy or a Golden... No, an Oscar. She won an Oscar? Wait, no, I don't think she won. She was nominated. What's uh, the woman's name? As Lily someone Gladstone. That, she smoked it. Yeah, Gladstone. no, she was great. She was great. As someone that prefers Scorsese over Tarantino, this felt like a movie that Tarantino should have done. There was so uh, much build up to crazy shit. And like, I, I kind of needed the, the wild ending. It wasn't enough violence was too for, much a, for a Tarantino movie, though. Tarantino movies are always more violent. They were smoking mad people. They were smoking was it racist? mad people. Was they, it racist? Very but, racist. Oh, then definitely yeah. Tarantino's no, it, it echoed Tarantino's Tarantino would have found a way to use the N-word in a Native American say, what, white movie. I was going to say, what were they known as? Because it wouldn't hit as hard as the N-word. So I feel like that's why Tarantino would bow out of a film like this. Um, the, There's no the, former, the former name of the Washington Commanders, I think, would have been thrown around a lot. Well, it Tarantino was, would it find was, some way to could say Redskins. <laughs> I don't know anymore. It was, it was thrown around in there a little bit. It yeah, was. but like that, it's just like it's, those are weak. When they were bringing up the the Tulsa shit, yeah, they they throw them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Tarantino would have made that scene longer. He would like he would have harped. He would have rebombed Tulsa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the movie just would have been Tulsa. The current GI, the current Tulsa though, no CGI, like, yeah, just like, light it up again. <laughs> Is that 2024? <laughs> he would have changed the actual name from Black Wall Street to something else. Tarantino would have blew up an escalator in yeah. Tulsa right now. <laughs> in the 1920s. <laughs> and put Jamie Foxx in yeah, it for yeah, no yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tarantino go a little crazy. Uh, but what's, what's the uh, name of that actress that was in uh, Handmaid's Tale? Oh, the, the white bitch? Yeah, that face she made. Uh, what was an accurate description? <laughs> the, the I knew who he was actress. talking about. Uh, Elizabeth Moss. The face she makes through the entire series is the face Leo was making through the whole movie. Really? Oh, just God. the whole time. This I this is the character like the I whole hate. time. I can't stand I, Elizabeth. I Moss. hate her more than anyone I've ever hated in any show of all time. This dumbass. She's the face. worst character this to ever face. have lived. This was Le that was Leo the entire movie. She plays very unlikable characters and does a great job. She's probably a sweetheart in real life. I'm sure, but she's yeah. very good like at that's, being that's a the ones that plays like, like, like a, horrible. No, I mean, all in a good way. No, she's been in other stuff that she was good in. She Handmaid's Tale. She she was good just, in Handmaid's Tale. She's just an awful character. Yeah. Also, Roy, you really like watched Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. And you're still. She was a love. It was a, it's a great people, series. Man. I just can't get past her facial facial reactions throughout the entire thing. They yeah they were off putting. Julian, you want to go to voicemails? Oh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, after that uh, sidestep. So we have this recent story. See why it never got any awards. <laughs> Didn't it not? Oh, never mind. Hey, everyone. It's Michelle from Chicago calling back uh, with the Rory requested threesome story. So, bam, here we go. She the whole singled team. you out the because whole it team. was only you asking for the damn thing. The team. All right. We're a unit. So, 
Fuck, I totally wish that it was, I think maybe Julian said it. See? Uh, at the th- that the threesome happened during my quest to hit all seven continents. And unfortunately, no, it didn't. Yeah, uh, it happened here in Chicago. Um, but I guess some backstory is uh, for a couple of years, uh, leading up to turning 30, I was in a really, really awful relationship, incredibly controlling, very abusive. Oh, one of those relationships, like you can't even believe you are in it. You can't even believe you find yourself in this. And anyway, that's not important. What's important is that after I got out of that relationship, I took control back of my life, my sensuality, myself, my sexuality, hey no. everything, and was bound and determined to have a threesome because he never, quote unquote, let me, which is so fucking nauseating to even say because I'm not the type of person to let anybody tell me what the fuck to do. But um, anyway, shit, I'm running out of time. So basically, I meet this married couple. They invite me into their relationship Swag. as kind of their girlfriend. Love it. And things just take off from there. He was a filmmaker. And I was basically the creative director of my own threesome. He shot it in the most beautiful, like, film noir, sexy as hell type of way. And it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Oh, she had the fucking Why jackpot for a first threesome. The story with five seconds left on the clock. That's fire. My nipples are hard. Yo. Uh, unharden them. The fuck? Like, yo, yo, Rel, can you teach me how to film make? Film make. That was gay. <laughs> I feel like. That was gay? It's a woman talking. No. <laughs> I don't want to make a big mall guy. I don't want to have a threesome you. with Rel. I, say, like, I just want to film you. make because clearly filmmakers are going crazy. That's what a beautiful fire. threesome. She said that he wouldn't let her have a threesome. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Maul. I would assume that he probably liked, like, he didn't want her. To, he didn't want to have one with her. That's crazy. You know how easy it is for women to have a threesome? It's easy for Just women to ask. do anything. No, I know. Well, yes. I mean, that's why they deserve less financially. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, specifically when it comes to threesomes... Every man has that, like, oh, my God, I want to... If a woman just goes up to a couple, I like, I want to fuck you both. They're going to be like, yeah, sure. Well, or if the, the couple girl might whoop her ass. Yeah. She could just say no. Yeah, I mean, if the couple was into it, though, like... Yeah, yeah, And even if they're not, I could still see it turning into, like, a flirtatious type of, like, no, but you're cute, and, you know, if we were into that, we would, and... Aww. But you could sit with us and, like, drink and, you know, whatever. Like, I could see it being that. But like men, we can't get that shit off. Hell no. But well, in our case, you'd have to approach two women. We can't go up to two lesbians and be like, yo, I would love. No, it's actually very disrespectful to do that. See? See how fast we disrespectful? It we should see, be disrespectful to see, say that to any couple. Yeah, like, like, yo, let me but fuck look, y'all. No, no, no. But the <laughs> men, like, see? Yeah, like that. Well, usually the couple comes up to you. Mm. That's what's supposed to happen. The couple is supposed to approach you. I guess. Yeah. That's what happened here. The couple approached her. Mm-hmm. This did sound like the beginning of an amazing horror movie, though, no? Well, like this really nice couple that does video and he's a director and they shoot this amazing scene and, and they she, treat her so well. And, she and then falls the next asleep. time she and comes then, back, they want to film her, but like they want to tie her up and then they like abuse her. Or That's like fire. she goes back for the Not second for a time. Movie. It's a good movie. They're out running errands and they have such a beautiful place that she just starts walking around. She goes into his office, mm-hmm. then finds like all the tapes of the other threesomes of them just killing the girl mm. afterwards. Mm. Like I, that's that's what it sounded like Screen to me. Screenwriter Rory. That's like Hulu movie. Screenwriter Rory. There's, there's like ten Tubi okay. movies that probably Sydney are that Sweeney. exact <laughs> plot. Sydney Sweeney did a film like that on Hulu. Mm. She got fully naked and it. it was a big moment. Mm. Euphoria? No, no, it's a oh. film on Hulu. There's just, uh, it's very voyeuristic. She lives in the building across from these people. She goes across the guy's a photographer. He's a creep, of course. And then they like have all these tapes and photos and images of every other. Girl. It's it's literally what you just said mm-hmm. is the movie. How like as a couple with Sydney Sweeney's tips? All of my like threesome requests has been somebody like I knew and thought they would pair well. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? If I was having a conversation with a girl I was talking to or dating and we were talking about threesomes, I mean, it's best if she picks, but I've offered up options of like women that Mm -hmm. I think she'd find attractive, whatever, you know, you go through the whole checklist. Mm -hmm. What do you do as like a couple just on like a sandals resort Mm -hmm. and just fight? Like, how do you find that girl? 
to me, that's like just porno shit. They and maybe I'm naive. They approach all the girls. Couples just run into women by themselves, just ready to have threesomes. Yeah, yeah. that actually happens Damn. a lot. I, I guess I'm not living. Especially on vacations. Like a lot of the women that like work at resorts and stuff like that. Okay, I guess I can see that. I've always wanted to do that. What? I didn't know that people really did that until I saw somebody do it. And I was like, y'all really fuck strangers on vacation. I just will never get over that. Oh, strangers. Like, I'm not worried about that. Couples or just people in general? I'm not worried about strangers. I'm saying well, Isn't like, that the point of a vacation is fuck a stranger? A hotel employee. No. No. That sounds great. Like if you're on vacation by yourself? You know, or whatever. Like if we go to LA and shoot some shit. Mm. I'm just not that bold. Like I respect people's workplace. If I'm with my girl and we're like trying to have a threesome the maid would be the last person I would ask. Both like, why, why would I, f- like, this woman's at work. Like, yeah. why would I fuck up her? Yeah, but you get paid, so. Remember when we was in high school, we went to, uh, I don't want to pay for a threesome. We had a show, I think, I want to say it was like in random, Iowa. Maybe. Nice. Shout out Iowa. And my homeboy <laughs> that I was in school with at the time, he, he fucked the girl that worked at the front desk. We was high school. So he was like 16. This was clearly a grown woman. So this is a crime. No, I, this is what I'm getting to. Like, but I remember like seeing like, I was like, I was like, yo, that's shorty from the front desk in your room? He was like, yeah. <laughs> the women are predators, man. I'm like, yo, what the? F-? Now she wasn't, she was definitely in her 20s. 100%. Like she wasn't, I don't think she was 30. But she was in her 20s. But I just remember seeing her in the room and I was just like, yo, that's... Cr-. And I remember him saying, he was like, I'm gonna fuck shorty at the front desk. I'm like, that's a grown ass woman. Like, shut up. Four hours later, she was in his room. What is it about that, in, especially in schools where like teachers, it's usually women that are fucking the students. It is not usually women. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It is not usually... Well, look, Pull up the statistics that show me that it's usually women. And then who took those st- statistics? Mm. It's not a weird, it's a weird poll. That's a weird year. Like, who did that? Who went around the, the nation like, hey, how many uh, male teachers versus female teachers fuck well, students? Sure I, I don't know the stats, but... who get caught. From what I've seen recently, it, it does seem like it's only the women teachers being caught fucking their students. Yes. It's been recently. a long time since I've seen But coming up, in, but male. that's because little boys don't know how to keep their mouth shut because coming up in high school, the male teachers were always creepiest. We all. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that was like creepier. in the news. That well, the male, male teachers are creepy. But in the news, like women are more, been, more like covert about their intentions. As you know. <laughs> You're a woman, so Thanks you can me. speak to your I intentions. I don't have covert intentions, my love. <laughs> All right, well, give me the scenario if I'm on vacation to like how, how to lure in the, the threesome Ooh, as a couple. Sounds creepy. Just, you, well, you got to see who's giving you, well, first of all, you and Kia are a very attractive couple. Oh, so thanks. people will- Well, not with the hair now. She has a lot of the lifting. If I get a haircut, maybe I'll be more attractive. No, you'll attract more white women like this. So- I, Ew. I'm joking. I love that. No, no, no. I'm stand joking. on it. Stand, stand on, on it. Uh, That's not very Republican of uh, you. Like, stand on that shit, man. Um, so y'all will naturally get, you know- looks from women and stuff like that. You go to the bar, you kind of like, you know, you talk to people and as you talk to people, you can tell when someone's giving you like the energy. Look, look, look how fast she's showing us her covert intentions, right? Uh, my covert intentions. You giving them the playbook? Who drew that playbook? Mm. Coaches don't play. Co- they, some of them used to. Some of the best coaches. Yeah, some of the play. best coaches yeah. absolutely play. <laughs> experience is everything. That's what exactly. they say. So going on vacation next week, Mm-hmm. Miami. I need this. Well, I you can't. Just, stop. just, just oh, tell me exactly where the sorry, fuck I'm, I'm going. So sorry. <laughs> Staying at the. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Covert intentions. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. We could we could bleep that out. But um, on vacation. So, so like, do I just walk to the, the strip <laughs> and just? Also, like, I feel like that takes a a bit of finessing. Do I tell the nanny to leave? Or just buy a bitch some mahi mahi. And she'll I'm not. I'm not paying dinner. for a threesome. To me, that's. No, I'm That's not saying odd. pay for sex. I'm saying just get her like a Mai Tai and like a piece of lobster and she'll fucking do it. Yeah, well, you're going to, if you're going to do the threesome thing. A piece thing, of lobster. Usually I don't know if go, I want that pussy. You go to a place like a lounge or like a hotel bar or like a regular just bar or whatever. The Clevelander. And you just talk to women. That's a sick place and to go And if to. you feel like you're getting play from a woman. That'd be my woman, first place to go. You feel like you're getting play from a woman. You, I literally hate you guys so much. He's, I mean, that's how out of touch I am. You That'd be the first go, place. Bro. You wet wet willies? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, you don't want to go to wet willies. Uh, no. You want a wet willy pussy. God, no. No. Um, no. Don't go on the strip. Is there like a, a specific color t-shirt I should wear? No. Like the way you guys have talked about wear these. Wear a bad boy hat. You want to Yes, like down. these messaging things that are out there. 
when you were talking about being in the sauna and you knew how to attract the gay guys because you knew the signs. Oh, that's not how I Like, what it. is the, the, hey, we're a couple <laughs> looking for a third. He knew a shirt. He knew a side to tie his towel on. The <laughs> man is flirting with a woman in front of his woman. If you are flirting with me in front of your girl, I know what you're trying to do. I know what y'all are trying to do. Also, he'd have to be. But I feel like she should be the she one. She should talk. No, that can also happen as well. But you also have to give energy. You have you both have to be giving energy. So you both should be flirting with me. What him. if I play like the mysterious role in the corner? I mean, like, you just do that. Act like, no, you got to do is but act you like. Gotta have the girl, you got to have the girl. <laughs> how, how quickly would this dry up the pussy? Yeah, no, nah, that's dry. <laughs> All you gotta do is act like uh, act like Justin Timberlake in his latest. I was video. gonna say, yeah, get on your JT back. That's, that's all you gotta do. I'm not that smooth. I would yeah. I would fall. You gotta right. no. Yeah. The thing is, you have to order a drink fall. and then turn your back to the bartender, lean against the bar, like, and then she just puts the drink right here. I think wow, like I'm wow. nearsighted. Yeah, I have to focus on what's in front of me. Yeah. I couldn't see her all the way at the end of the club. Listen, order the not, drink, right? And then you around. turn around and you put your back to the bar, like you, this. Lean, you lean on the bar. The bartender puts the drink right by your arm, and you look directly at the woman that. You and your lady want pick up the drink and sip it, mm. and then what you do is you I, order another I'm drink. Not that cool, guys. No, listen, you order you know, another drink, whatever you're drinking. So give me another strategy. No, listen, you order. Tell whatever, her I'm a good listener. Another drink that you're drinking, you're and then you listener. take the drink to the girl. Exactly. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good bar. You sorry? I told him he wasn't a good listener. He said what you say. It was a. You guys are giving me a scenario that I can't pull off. That's There's no a, way that the girl order that's drink? by herself that would fuck the both of us. Would fall for me, or like, what am I, the most interesting man in the world? Well, he, all like, what, is this if, a the second commercial or whatever? Might like, be sun. Here's the thing: send her a drink. Nine Just times out of drink, ten, bro. okay. Well, let's so say easy. More times than none. If a woman is alone in a spot, like a vacation spot, like whether it's a restaurant, bar, if she's alone, she's probably working. So it's probably gonna be really probably easy fair. To, it's probably gonna be really easy. I, to fuck I don't want to do that. He Why wants not? the natural. He wants the girl that's just like there with her friends. For the weekend, like... And you grabbed a cute one? I don't want a professional. Oh, you don't I want, want a girl, girl? I want a girl that's trying to fulfill her threesome checklist. Oh, and she goes back That'll to That'll give the better energy than the girl that's about to leave my threesome to go have another threesome. Got it. Yeah, true. It's not, that's it. not really my... my st and no disrespect to people that pay for sex. It's just not my thing. Right. So have... Send Kia hunting. Kia will have to catch the vibe from the girl and see if she can get the girl to eat her pussy in the bathroom. If she can do that, Kia has to halt it before they get too turned on and then take her with y'all. I have a hotel. No, that's what I'm... He pussy in your to, bathroom. You know, they gotta the hit the bathroom lick They gotta first. hit the bathroom lick first to see if she I don't can even know if there's a bathroom at Wet Willie's. <laughs> Why are you there? I told you I told you in the first bar, don't go to Wet Willie's. I think now they just still eat there. pussy at the bar stools and yeah, Wet Willie's. That's the check-in. That. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, that's eating like pussy in the bathroom in. is crazy. <laughs> girls do that all the time, but she's not supposed what? to. What? Yeah, the thing. when girls she's go to the bathroom together, to go all the way with it. I thought that she's was like to warm it up, like maybe like finger her or like kiss her or something like that. And kissing would I, I leave I, warm spot. somebody up by just fingering them is crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hey, so how you doing, huh? Everything cool down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to? Where you, you from? Want, you got ten yeah. more minutes. You want to get another drink? Yeah, where you from? Are you, where are me too? I've been there mad times. Like, yeah. we can't see men it's can't like do starting that. a lawnmower. Yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. Men cannot do that. No one should be doing that. That's something that women could do that. Rory has sent her a drink. Fucking in a bathroom. It's I kind of it's kind of lit like a club or a bar. No, it's great. I haven't done that in a long time. That's Last a, time I did it was during COVID. That's a fun thing. Eating pussy in the bathroom is crazy. All you got to do is put a leg up on the um toilet. So you got to do, right? <laughs> what I hear. <laughs> What I, yo, all you boy, gotta you do, my body today. Like, yo, you don't you? hit the merits. All you gotta do, whenever a nigga say all you gotta do, you either go into jail or they did it already. Put like, yo, all you gotta do is that, nigga, how many times you did that? All you gotta do, Just put a leg up on the sink. It seems a little more sanitized. Yeah, but it's, sinks are higher. If you're short, hypothetically, like it's a lot to hold that leg up there. Hmm. Toilet is mm. shorter. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I just feel like we would ruin the moment in the Uber back to the hotel. No, because we'd, we'd start man. talking about tomorrow. You you should just get a different car. <laughs> no, send them home together. You get a separate car and meet them there. Yeah, because you just you literally get into the room when they, when they're ready. Like you don't come along and fuck it up along the way. I know I've had my fair share of threesomes. I know how to operate once it's not going not down under these circumstances. A, a cold call threesome. I've cold never call. I've never done before. <laughs> so no, she could FaceTime you. I don't in. I don't know how to operate that entire cold thing. call threesome. Just walking right into you can it. You get FaceTimed in. <laughs> Hey, new parents haven't been outside. 
Very Why do you trying to get crazy? The, the baby up, bro. Weird. Stop talking about. I'm trying to say that's how weird we <laughs> are now. The love of his life. Right? Right? What what you you like, do? Like, look at here. Look at this me on the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how I secured my uh, turn my to baby. Fucking ashes. <laughs> <laughs> Rory would walk into the three and start showing videos of Amara. Like, yeah, this was her her first walk right here. This is when she started walking. On Once the three was done, though, that'd be a good thing to do, right? No, no. It's a terrible thing to do. Why? What that, if, just don't leave the the kid out. Kick of her out. Yeah. There you go. Kick Not her Amara, out. the woman. Who wants to think about kids with dried nut on the side of their face? Nobody, nobody wants well, my, to think about. No, it'd be after kids. I like wiped her face. But see, this could have been one of those. This one. Yeah. Mm. Look what I create. If I leave it in, we could okay. all be co parents. Okay. Yeah. Do we have another voicemail? We could be co parents. That's <laughs> sick. That's sick. Getting Wait, a girl you pregnant kick, in a threesome? You want to kick the girl out after the threesome? No. Well, to me, that's like kind of the allure of the threesome afterwards. Like, let her stay. If she's did, cool, if she's cool. If she's cool, then it's like she can stay. Like the community of it afterwards to me is like a real big thing. Bring people That's together. only, but that's because you've only had threesomes with people that you weren't in serious relationships with. You now that you're in a serious relationship, you don't want that girl staying there. Go home, yeah, so I can lay down with. No, my it's a partner. community. Because Kia wouldn't want this chick just hanging out. What if she's cool? What if she has like a really cool perspective? What if she's dope? <laughs> perspective. I don't want Rory. Gaza. <laughs> I need y'all to stop using that. Classic. Just that's a classic. Yo, he said. I don't want to say. He said. I. I'm the sickest human being on earth. He said. Let's just put it that way. That is, no one has that any idea what we're talking about. Mind. I'm the sickest human being that's ever existed. I'm aware. Oh, yes. I'm aware. I'm the sickest God. human being. I was hoping you'd say it. <laughs> is it the Jews? <laughs> There's no way he's talking. About like, oh shit. <laughs> Yo, is it the Jews through the hotel room door? Am I crazy? <laughs> am I the sickest human being or <laughs> am I the most profound human being you're the you've sick, ever come across? You're the, oh, you're the sickest guy. nigga I've ever met in my life. <laughs> By far, that Miami? shit. Miami, your dog. That shit was the craziest. <laughs> I yo, think about that often. Yo, <laughs> me and Julian was laughing so hard. Security came upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> the guy tried to kick us out of the hotel. He goes, Sue, where are you? It's on like, bar for room. London. I'm like, my room is right here. Sue, where are you in the room? So we, we just point to our doors. We're standing outside. He goes, can you go in either one of those? <laughs> we were just laughing so hard. <laughs> Oh my stomach. Yo. Oh, how yo. bad we wish we could tell yo. you guys what we're talking about. Yo. Um, Holy shit. Is it the is it the Jews is the crazy <laughs> shit? Am I the goat? No. No, you had to lose. What no. about the halal yo, version of goat? Yo, Maul and I went out. We laughed <gasps> for like two hours oh, after that. Holy shit. Oh, that was so funny. Yo, y'all are sick. <laughs> y'all are fucking crazy. <laughs> Uh, this next voicemail could go either one of two ways. We either keep it or cut it, uh, depending on how we talk about it. So, All right, well, let's see. Here we go. Yo, what's good, baby? It's Picasso from Virginia. I got a question for y'all, a hypothetical question, even though this shit really is a motherfucker. Uh, so I got a girl, and in my girl's close group of friends, one of them is transgender. Like, he used to be a nigga, but now he's a girl, or she's a girl. She's a girl now. Used to be a nigga, but I've been thinking all that. And uh, she has a man now who she started to bring around the group every time we hang out and shit like that. How do we know him like that? And how do we know her like that? But he has no idea as of now that she used to be a nigga because she, she looks convincing. As well. She looks convincing. I'm not going to lie. She looks convincing. And uh, my girl told me that she's made it clear that she has no real intentions of letting him know about her past. Hey, should I tell this nigga? Like, where should my loyalty lie on this? Am I wrong for outing her? Or am I wrong for letting this nigga, I don't know, be tricked, I guess? Because, like, she's not going to tell him. And I low-key think it's fucked up, but she's not going to tell him if you're going to take this man seriously. But I don't really know her like that. I don't know him like that. I don't know if, if uh, I should do anything at all. Or just watch this shit explode, I guess. What should I do? Let me know. Mind your fucking business. That's I was just in a situation like that. Oh, please do tell. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Well, not like I, that. I figured but you were I, this. I, that I that saw, trumps my Gaza story immediately. No, no, no. I, I, I saw uh, somebody that I've had, you know, interactions with here and there, like a picture of someone that I know is trans. 
I don't know the trans person, but I know that they're trans because I know somebody that knows that hurt the trans the trans girl. So I seen he was like on a bunch of pics, liking a bunch of pics. So I'm like, all right. And I know he's a sniper, full fledged sniper. So I'm like, let me, in case he didn't already snipe, let me let him know. Like, yo, fam, I see you in the likes a lot. Like, this is know. a trans woman. Might be changing the caliber of the bullet. No. He might be I, sniping the way he so wants I, to I DM'd him and told him, I was like, bro, this is a, a trans woman. Like, in case you didn't know. He was like, "Oh shit, good looking." Like I had no idea. I don't. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. This person should mind their fucking business. They should mind their business. Nah, but that. But why? What do you mean? But why? Because if he tells that man that that woman is trans and that man kills that woman, guess who that's on? It's on her, but it's also on him. And you now you got to carry that with you because you could have just shut your mouth. They don't have. Wait, did he? Did he? Did he engage in sexual activity with the? Trans? It doesn't seem. Doesn't that, sound. We're not aware. It's like he's trying to. He's trying to prevent it from. It sounds like he's trying to prevent it. Well, no, they're, I they're, think they're he dating. said they've been dating. They're they've probably slept together. I would imagine. No, play that. Yeah. Play that one more time because I do want to get that exact detail because that's important. Because I think that prevents what Damaris is talking about if he lets him know. Ahead of time instead of yeah. no, not exactly. Which not is exactly. Not, which is fucked up and wrong, but it doesn't it doesn't prevent it actually. Which is why not prevent it. I'm sorry for saying that, but a heads up could maybe alleviate a situation that could go but very. That's not bad. even your friend. That's not even his friend. It's his girl's yeah, homie. It's, it's it's weird, man. Yeah. Like well, you question. should mind your fucking. You business. Mind I, your I, get fucking it, business. I get it. I get it. But Picasso here is his girl's homies. It. It's his girl's homie that used to be a girl that's now trans. Man, that he's trying to warn. It's like five degrees of separation. That don't have shit to do with you. That's mm. not your home. Picasso boy. shouldn't say anything, but I think the real question is, should the person who did transition, yes. should they tell someone, hey, yo, for but by the way, I know we're seeing each other <clears throat> and getting serious, whatever, hanging out more. I used to be a uh, man and now I'm a woman. That's a conversation. Yeah, I feel like that is the baseline. To save you your that. life, that's a conversation you should have on the first or second date. Yeah, yeah. I To agree. save your own life. Because that's, to Damaris's point, a lot of people lose their lives because they withhold that information, get sexual with someone, and then it becomes revealed and then that person can't live with that thought so they kill them. Yeah, it should be so to save brought up life, right away. Fucking be like, yo. Just tell people. Just yeah. be honest up front. But homie should mind his business. Yeah, I don't unless they're like friends or has like a bro code thing. They don't know each other. He shouldn't say. He and, shouldn't. He shouldn't be the one to say it. And you don't know if he really knows or not. They could be telling you he don't know. He might know. You no, should mind your said, business. They just said. The, I'll play this part again because he does say that. Girl, and then my girl's close group of friends. <laughs> one of them is transgender. Like he used to be a nigga, but now he's a or she's a girl. She's a girl now. Used to be a nigga, but a dick and all that. And uh. She has a man. I love now. He's, so she started I like the attempt. around the group every time we hang out and shit like that. I don't really know him like that. And I don't really know her like that. But he has no idea as of now that she used to be a nigga. Because she, she looks convincing. As well. She looks convincing. I'm not going to lie. She looks convincing. And uh, my girl told me that she's made it clear that she has no real intentions of letting him know about her past. So that's the part that's troubling. Mm -hmm. Because if she knows and plans on keeping that a secret, <clears throat> then shit gets dangerous. I wouldn't tell him, but I would have a conversation with your girl that she should have a conversation with her friend. For like for the safety of your friend. Yeah, like just in case, make that be known. Because yeah. it's crazy out here and it's not right that transgender people have to say that from the beginning, but let's deal with reality and the world we live in. It's mm -hmm. something that you should say from the beginning because people are fucking crazy. The same way, no matter what your gender is dating, you have to take certain precautions. Yeah. No matter what, for health reasons. Mm -hmm. And it's just always- Same good. with the transgender community. You <clears throat> need to make that clear because people are fucking nuts. And it's just not right. Like, that's start there. It's just not right for you to play on somebody's reality like that. Like, if this is a heterosexual man and you're trans, you should definitely let that man know. Like, Well, the thinking is that they are 100% a woman. Uh, and they're, I'm I, know, what they, I know what their thinking is. I, I'm, Let's talk about what my thinking is as a heterosexual man. Because people like to just go with their thinking. Yeah, but it's two people here. So don't just tell me what their thinking is. Let's talk about what my thinking is. My thinking is I like a full-fledged woman, natural born woman. Whatever you decide to do as an adult, great. That's your life. But don't play with my reality and think that I'm looking at a woman when you were born as male. Like, 
No, now you're playing on my reality. And it's it not right. And that's where, it's, where it comes in, where it doesn't matter what is, you know, PC or what's actually right, right? It, it's not about that. It's about the person that you're dating and what they believe. That's why I said some things, it doesn't matter what's right or wrong. It matters about other people's perception. And if their perception is that you're not, that trans women are not full women, whether I agree with that, you agree with that, whoever agrees with that, that's their thinking and they're in this relationship. And you need to consider that when you, before you start dating someone. Yeah, what are you right now? A woman? Cool. Were you born? As is a woman? that something you guys are going to start asking when you're dating? If somebody was born a woman? Because mm -hmm. I, I, I ask now if you're married, if you have a girlfriend, if you have kids, if you have anybody that thinks she's your girlfriend, you have to ask certain things. Are you going to ask like... Do you think that's a good question to ask in my cold call threesome in Miami? Yes. Mm. If you care. Out the gate? Yes. If it's a strange random woman that you think is attractive, yes. Do you think Got that'll it. set the mood if I'm like, yo, you... Like, no, it's just, it's let me just, see your birth certificate. I was just about to say something else. <laughs> let me see your crotch. Like, yeah, like it's got a piece tucked in that bikini. <laughs> they have, they, their surgeries that people get to have. Yeah, it's not I feel like I could tell. If you show me a pussy that used to be a dick, I feel like I should be able to tell. I don't know, man. I've seen like enough pussies to be able now. to tell, bro. Like, I've seen enough. It's like, all right, fam. I, I could spot an eight ball. Like, I, I know what that is right there. Like, that ain't, that ain't real. That's not real. It's vegan. It's just not real. But not all vaginas don't look the same, though. Some vaginas exactly. look completely different from others. So you're right. So I feel like I should be able to tell when something that completely was never a vagina that is now a vagina, I should be able to tell. It's like turkey bacon. You don't know until you try it. <clears throat> it's like, turkey bacon no, looks like bacon. No, it doesn't. The amount of, like we live in New York, which is a community full of everything. New York mm -hmm. is probably one of the biggest cities that's like that. We also frequent LA a lot. We go in major cities that have a lot of the transgender community. It's weird that I don't really run in to a lot of friends that have like stories that are actively dating that that happens. Mm -hmm. That they just run into a transgender woman or vice versa, run into a transgender man. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen as often. I had one friend take a, one, uh, a transgender woman on a date unknowingly, similar situation, like didn't know, met on a dating app. All the all the shit that you see, the photos, whatever, met in person. And I don't remember how he found out, but he was like, then the, the transgender woman was calling him transphobic because he wouldn't go on another date with her. And he's like, well, yeah, like this, obviously, circumstantially, this is different than what I thought initially. And he's like a good looking dude. He's like a model. This woman, I think, also modeled. So it was like, it's like one of those kind of couples. And he was just like, yeah, but like this isn't, and she like tried to get him canceled and like publicly smear his name. He's like, that's not, this isn't going to work. Like what? I mean, that's the contradicting thing that is from that community. Like if there's such a spectrum and we all have our preferences and there's so many different ideas of what we like in this spectrum, mm -hmm. why can't I just like a natural born woman? Right. If we're all, if there's so many different parts of the spectrum, nah, why hitting. am I transphobic? Because I just like a natural born woman. Yeah, that's, How is that, that transphobic? That's, I, 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 I'm not trying to take away your right to vote. Right. I'm with you guys. Like I'm claustrophobic. Mm. If you think actually that's, yeah, that's a perfect point. Right. <laughs> like I just can't, like I hate tight quarters, tight. You places. hate tight pussy. <laughs> but I'm transphobic. I don't care about, I don't do what you want to do, but. Tell me what you are if I'm trying to actively date you. Like, yeah. give me, you have to give me that. Like, trying to still see the parallel between claustrophobia and. Because I don't care about like a trans, like I'm not transphobic. I just don't want to. elevators. I don't want to have sex with a trans woman. Like that doesn't make me transphobic. Like that's what always it does me. actually. It's like when people Twitter. Yeah. When people do that, it's like, well, it, if, if you're not into it, therefore you are. The phobe, like, No. That's just such like a it's crazy stupid, leap bro. of like it's judgment. No, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But hey, like what you like, love what you love. He shouldn't Ray, say anything. Ray uh, said. But I think Damaris is right. You should tell your home, your girl to tell her home girl. To be honest. Yeah. <sighs> did we say we're in D.C. Saturday? Mm -hmm. We did. D.C. Saturday, March 23rd. Howard Theater. We're back. Y'all gonna take a shot for me? I'm just thinking about that <clears throat> idea of me taking a girl back to our hotel and she's transgender. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> just put some money in my Because hotel. I'm very polite and <laughs> nah, progressive. You shit. 
No, you're not. Not a necessary. You would not. Now you wouldn't be like, oh no, it's, it's cool. Yeah, he back. I he would. Back swam me out on you. So what if your girl still wanted to sleep with her? <clears throat> me, me and Kia would have to have some serious conversations. <laughs> Well, yeah. if you back it out, it's bigger than How yours. How though? If you're not, if, if it's your sick. preference not to have sex with somebody, you say you're not transphobic, but that's not your preference. If she's willing to have sex with that person, that like just her, that will bother you. Wait, say that scenario again. <laughs> Yo, this is sick. If she wanted to still have sex with that person, the same way if she bought a girl to the hotel and you had drank too much and your dick couldn't get hard, and you would still let her fuck the girl. You wouldn't let her fuck a transgender person if that's what she wanted to. All right, does does the trans still have their piece? Yeah, is is another no. dick going in my girl's vagina? No. Sure, go go bump thighs. Nah, man, <laughs> don't do that, Roy. Stand no business. No, you wouldn't. No, you not. You no. Not. The same way that he's just gonna walk out the, the her, uh, key again, her pussy eight, and just you know make a sandwich. Oh, they yeah. will talk that, about that, this later. He said, he said, "I'll get back to you later." <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. Ain't no nigga ever do no Man, shit I like that. Do that in the gym the other morning. Walk out I the room and be like, "We'll talk I was later." So hard. <laughs> I'm here to double down on the it. Lie talk, in his tongue. I, no I thought about it later after the episode and was like, "Yeah, that's if it, if it was a girl I knew." Uh huh. I would. Let it happen once I realized that I was not invited. Uh-huh. I'm not going to fuck up that situation because I have hope that maybe I'll be let into this okay. at some point. All right, so That's why I said that. Okay. I was very clear in that regard. Okay, you have so hope. Are you like, are you if, if this some strange bitch eating Kia's pussy when I walk in my house, no, I, <laughs> I'm shutting everything down. Okay. So Who is this to, person in my house? It has to be a, a woman you know. Yeah, and I'm going to walk in like, so you're what's her, up? You're and if, the they were, be. if they were clear that I wasn't part of it, I would leave. I wouldn't end it. Yeah, but you don't know this trans woman. So, so it's like she doesn't have a piece though, right? No. no. Fresh pussy straight off the assembly line. I would have some questions. Nah, bro. If that situation happened where they still had the piece, Julian asked, like, what if it was bigger than yours? What a conflicting <laughs> moment that would be. Like, if you was ready Mom, to get busy answer. and then son just pulled it out. Son, not only would you be like, daughter. what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, she daughter's back. not see son is a <laughs> phrase we use for everybody that's right? universal because we're all children under the sun mm. I call they son because they shine yeah, like she one she backed right? out the hammer and it's because <laughs> one I'd be conflicted like what the fuck seven but, soft but, but two <laughs> seven soft is crazy <laughs> Yo, no warts, yo. clean shaft. What a waste of a piece. Seven soft. Like you sure you wanna? Goddamn, Johnny Sins. You be going nuts, dude. <laughs> yo, backing up the seven soft. <laughs> Shit waxed. Like what a conflicting moment. Yo, yo, that's crazy. Because uh, I'd be thrown off just like of a dick coming out. Period. Yeah. But then, like the ego part of, I'm there with my girl and. He's seven soft, clean <laughs> shaft. <laughs> now I'm like, yo, yo, oh my God. I don't know how Arella's gonna <laughs> chop this up. Life you is can crazy. leave this. Yeah, why just, not? Just put a bunch of cuts seven to make it soft as fucking. <laughs> <laughs> on the vacay, though, like on the vacation. The Maris is quit and walked. Miami, and y'all staying in the same hotel, so you got to keep seeing that person the whole time you're on vacation. Uh, <laughs> how you talking seven soft into a bikini? Yo, man, it's crazy. You got to tape that shit to the whole. It's like it's shot shot you. how did I not see it through those leather pants? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Holy shit. God damn. All right, man. DC, we will see y'all this Saturday, March 23rd, Howard Theater, New Rory and Mall.com. Tickets are still available. Um, and let's get out of here, man. I'm fucking tired. I'm laughing. Y'all are fucking crazy. Uh, have a safe uh, week. We'll be back in a couple days kicking with y'all. Subscribe to the Patreon. Subscribe to the YouTube. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, New Rory and Mall. Talk to you soon. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace. New Rory and Mall.